four, three, two. Welcome everybody to the Plat Chat Awards 2022. Holy poggers, we've got all types of awards going out today. The most prestigious awards of all, um, aside from why it's weekly award, but these, these Plat Chat Awards, quite prestigious. Our esteemed panel of experts have been mulling over these decisions for weeks. <laughs> Who will win? We'll find out. And we have, we have some special secret, some unexpected special secret awards that you're not going to see coming. So you're going to want to make sure you stay tuned in. Uh, Connor, I like that you've, uh, you're calling in right now from your iPhone. We've got you on FaceTime. That's really nice. <laughs> I'm actually at my local uh, Starbucks. Is actually what it is. I'm at my local Starbucks, and when we're gonna do the awards, I'm waiting for the employee, maybe employer, someone to walk by. I'm gonna soy jack as they go past. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do that as they walk past, and that way it's gonna be it's gonna be a really prestigious this award ceremony. I, I, I think. think this episode is gonna be an absolute banger. I've, listen, I've been looking through some of the stuff that, frankly. Baller and Kurt have put together. Let's be reasonable about this. The, yes, sure. There's been there's been some input from elsewhere, but yes. the uh, in fact the, I'm seeing this live. Most of this, I'm going to be seeing most of this live. <laughs> but I I think that is about the same level of effort that most of the award shows in esports go for. Frankly, if you look at how they run, and we're going to be even better because we're not going to cut to 20 minutes of sponsor reads because we got no sponsors. Well, well yeah. <laughs> You better wait, because I got some stuff cooked up later. Oh, <laughs> oh, you, got, oh you got spot. Okay. Ooh, and the peripheral creator of the year award. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see who wins that. Is it going to be Corsair again? Because they're sponsoring this event. Let's see. <laughs> um, also, Josh, I like that it looks like you're now in the Misfits compound. You're like back where yeah, Connor was changed. at the beginning of the year. We yeah. did a prisoner swap. He's yes. now in the Misfits Black site. And I, well, I mean, actually, what is this? Wow. I mean, What's look, happening? Look, look at the lights. They don't even have lunch. But, you know, I just, I, it actually looks like you're in an enhanced interrogation room. They're going to be yeah. like doing everything short of torture to you. They're going to be, they're just going to be getting all the answers out of you. I don't even have that piece of furniture. Uh, oh, man, what was my hair? I was, my hair? I was looking like the... My hair was crazy in that moment. What was going on in here? Your expression as well, it's just... Day 73 in the <laughs> locked away in Misfits. Just came out of Abu Ghraib here. It's tough. I just got oh, out of there. Cat. It's a tough one. Your cat's eating yeah. the tree. Uh, there's five cats in this house, so you're going to see a lot of them. What? Right That's why. Bring cats. them all? What, name them one all? Of them, one of them's, uh, you want to name them? So this one's... You like cats? Name every cat. <laughs> name every cat. That one's Gandalf. There's... There's Did Leon. You just make call Big names. Lee. He's around here. No, I'm not. I'm not. There's also uh, there's his, there's uh, what's Augustus, which we call Goose. There's uh, Gunny, who we call Littles. This is not. I'm not joking. And then there's uh, Han Cheetah is the final one. And that's my brother's cat that he brings over in a dual custody situation when his is his girlfriend's cat and he brings it over and just drops it off and then she But, hangs but out all here. of the all of the other cats you have shortened nicknames for, but for some reason you say the word Han Cheetah every time you just Han Cheetah's already very short if you think about it. What do you mean that's it's a very really, short that, name? It's three syllables. That's a lot of it's syllables. Really, it really rolls off the tongue, in my opinion. So yeah, I mean, there it, you go. That's the full cat setup. Yeah. Aww. Okay. For the audio <laughs> listeners. <laughs> The cat's doing cat things. Wants to be go. the star of the show right now, huh? Just wants to be in the limelight over there. By the way, listen, I didn't want to make a big deal out of it, but if we're being real, no one takes this seriously anymore but me. I'm the only <laughs> one in a suit. I, am I the only one around here who takes the awards serious? I got my tie on. <laughs> I got <this> <laughs> What the f- come on, guys. <laughs> it's the plot. Dude, I left my suits at home. I try- generally I carry a contingent of suits whenever I go. Just a casual suit, but you know, this time they got- there's been a lot of travel woes, you know, recently. My, been my, my suits- my suits are somewhere across the Atlantic at the moment. They are currently in transit, <laughs> in a shipping container. And so mm. getting to them would be extraordinarily difficult. Yeah, and Wyatt, I'm in solidarity with the boys who don't have their suits right now. So yeah. <laughs> he's very clash conscious. No one takes Valorant seriously anymore he's only than me. Merch. <laughs> Bunch of bullshit. Did you guys, uh, Ball? Did you get anything cool for Christmas? Uh, yeah, I got some poker chips and a nice what? new artisan mouse pad. What? There's a, the artisan mouse pad. Oh, Look at good. the name. I can't I, fucking I can't even uh, see it. It won't focus. Uh, 
It's okay. There it is. Dude, you're getting into Radian in no time with that. Those artisan pads Easily. are no joke. Shout out Easily. to Artisan. Who are Give us <laughs> the money. Platchet Awards Mouse Please. Pad Developer of the Year. <laughs> artisan. <laughs> wow, congrats. <laughs> thank you, thank you. What about you, Connor? Did you what you you get you get something cool for um, Christmas? Um I got I got a pair of boots, actually. I have a pair of nice boots I've been wanting. That's that's the big thing I got. The rest of it, my parents were just like, you're Step a man now. They were just like, you're an adult now. You're 28 years old. <laughs> so not actually. That's not actually yeah. what happened. They, they, they've helped me Mo with other stuff. Most so, of my Christmas whatever. presents were presents to my daughter. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. She got a fucking tube that, Connor, you probably have many of them at your house where the cats crawl through them. And she's just uh, trying to... But you gifted it for, for your daughter. Uh, yeah, somebody gave it to my you daughter. You gave her a tube, a cat tube. To, to no, go it's through. a it's a baby. It's a tube for toddlers, not for <laughs> oh, cats. Right. Oh, I thought you just bought a cat. Is it, tube. Is it the same manufacturer though? Do they just change probably, the safety probably, regulations? Probably. <laughs> mm. Anyway, she's running around with the tube in her hands, so not crawling. <laughs> and then Bala she's also got his daughter a cat tree. <laughs> got, got one of those. She's gonna be really around. acrobatic. If you thought about it, a baby starting out with a cat tree, and like at their age, like. <laughs> They could be insanely skilled once they True. reach a certain age. Raising and developing <laughs> ninjas. <laughs> um, all right, let's get into the shit. We got the biggest takeaways from the Riot Games 1 Pro Invitational. Ah, uh, what does this mean for the Lock In Brazil event? Is it a preview of things to come? And Japan <laughs> is where it was, <laughs> which is also where Masters will be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm connecting the dots. What do you guys think about the results here? Uh, I mean, it was just show matches, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, <laughs> just, it was just show matches. <laughs> just, a, just a bit of yeah. fun, wasn't it? Just a bit of, yeah. just a bit of lighthearted fun over the Christmas holidays. I, I, just... I mean, Benkai came out in a Santa costume, and then they played fucking uh, the Harbor Yoru or whatever. I <laughs> Yo, I <laughs> saw. <laughs> Benkai was stepping out in some fits this past week. I don't know if y'all saw that on the timeline, but man was looking real. Man was looking good. He was looking real good. Like I can't that, see my timeline anymore. That I, I swear they've broken, different. they've broken the app. My timeline doesn't work. I don't see anything based on Valorant and the people I follow anymore. <laughs> The, the app is functionally dysfunctional. Well, you might you might be on the wrong. There's two modes. There's like the only what I follow mode, and then the like suggest everything that everyone sort of touches. Mode. Yeah, all, all I'm getting is what people touch. I'm getting yeah, I'm you, getting tweets that only Mister Bleeple has liked. That <laughs> just fed straight into my eyeball. Dude, wait, wait, I do that too. I have like, <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Here it's he looking comes. Nice though. There he comes. He looks Here like comes the that boy. <laughs> Yeah, it look, does a little bit like the Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he, it looks like that video of like the guy, the Winnie the guy just was Winnie the Pooh with the security detail. He's it's like bad. running, he's like walking through the streets. He's got his security detail, Santa. It's <laughs> a high risk political assassination. Mr. Target. President. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh God. God. Dude, I can't cr believe how many people showed up to I know, it's show crazy. matches. It's yeah. I mean, Japan be going know. dumb, stupid with it. They it's really crazy. is crazy. The, the Tokyo I mean, actually, event is going to be insane. Yeah, that is that is really the only thing you can take away from this, yeah. right? Is that oh well, they they officially announced during this event that it was going to be you know Masters One happening in Tokyo. Are they even calling it Masters One because there's only one Masters? Uh, they're just calling it Masters, I guess. For yeah, I think it's just Masters. But, but yeah, that uh, is going to yeah, be. Yeah, it's officially happening in Tokyo, and it's going to go ultra hard. It's going to go mega stupid. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's gonna be that's that is that is gonna be <laughs> very right. cool. Those thundersticks are gonna pop off. It's just the term ultra is... hard, mega stupid. <laughs> it's, it's I like it. A it's a good term. That's the best oh, way you can oh. describe it. Yeah, that's crazy. I think low key too, like the just the stage there, a little bit of a preview, hopefully for Brazil with what we saw with the tickets before, like the round thing mm -hmm. or the around the stage crowd. That yeah. could be pretty cool. Uh, I, I've got to be honest, I didn't watch the stream announcement of when they talked about the Masters Tokyo. Did they announce the venue? Have they talked about the capacity of the stadium, anything like that? I assume it's going to be a massive Japanese it stadium. Has but, to. Imagine yeah. if it wasn't, it was just like a fucking Copenhagen again. <laughs> <laughs> they go to Japan no, and put 20 people big. in the audience. There's no uh, way it's not going to be like a big venue, right? Nah, because they're be just like, it, like honestly, when you think of the most engaged region, like I, it's honestly hard to think of more engaged region right now other than maybe like. It's crazy that that's an unedited picture. 
Brazil potentially? Like, is out, you know, is that Latin America? Like, in terms of like how engaged their region is with Valorant? No, yeah. I think I think Japan beats. No, out, Japan. Um, I think they beat them all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would I would imagine anyway. At least in terms of live attendance, for sure. Yeah. No one's selling tickets like Japan is right now. Oh, yeah. Wow. They're going to have to expand uh, I mean, the stadium. Like that. What, where was the World Cup where they like expanded the stadium out? Like out the, the back where they just added on like a million rafters for extra seats where you could watch the game and it's like ants running around. <laughs> Does anyone know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it sounds like, I don't know. Watch, are, are they going to they're gonna put like unsafe like s stands up, people are gonna be dangling from the rafters, well, holding listen, on. Trying they're gonna to have to the seat four hundred thousand live attendees, <laughs> so they're gonna have to find a way to do it. Um, also, the just just today, breaking news, breaking news. Uh, earlier this morning, uh, got announced that uh, Valorant is going to be playable in China. So, you know, opening up the the horizons are expanding. A new player base waiting to get in, you know? Um, so what does this mean for the game? And how will they be integrated into the scene this year? Uh, and more importantly, the, the game is called... Wait, what's the game called again? <laughs> <laughs> the game is called Fearless Covenant. That's Fearless the most important Co part of this, awesome. in my opinion. Fearless Why? Covenant. Every, I mean, for every Valorant tournament that we cast from now on, I will be referring to the game as Fearless. I mean, that's Covenant like a instead of Valorant. In a Strahd promo card for Magic. <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. <laughs> oh wait, I was under. You know, just as a question, I was maybe I misunderstood because with Edward Gaming and and those teams having uh, participated earlier in some of the other events. Was Valorant? I thought I thought there had already been like a some sort of like playing, approval process. They were playing the underground. So it was circuit. still the underground Chinese yeah. circuit with yes. Bloodsport. Okay, yeah. that's what it was. Okay, this okay. is like this is sure. like the end of the Incredibles movie where the mole people come up from under the earth. <laughs> they, <laughs> we are the Undertakers or whatever they're called, and, and it's just the Chinese Valorant scene is no longer an underground circuit, and they're going to take over the world. There's still time to invite two Chinese teams to Sao Paulo and make it a proper 32 team like you know, power of two tournament instead of 30. I don't know how they're going to do that. There's still time to add two Chinese teams to the Masters event so that there's 12 teams yeah. there instead of 10, which is, again, an un uh, like an awkward number. I don't think Riot Rude. could really have... I don't know whether... <laughs> I don't think that the Chinese government is, like... Um, it is want to hand out memos and stuff, giving them months' notice that this was going to happen. I think they're more of a lockdown system than that. But the timing does seem quite fortuitous, actually, that you've still got a couple of months to maybe rejig some stuff to add them in rather than the whole of 2023 locking them out and just purely having to work their way through Ascension. Yeah. Yeah, probably. That is I, I think I, I read something on, about um, the fact that they're loosening restrictions on like video game approvals in general in China. So maybe there was like some sort of if you were paying attention to Chinese politics or whatever, you might have been able to know yeah. ahead of time that they're going to start loosening what that might mean, but no. Yeah, yeah. possibly. I mean, the, the thing that it makes me think of as well is that there was massive, massive uh, protests recently in China to abolish their COVID-free policy, yeah. and they've now gone completely in the opposite direction. And I think that was just feeding into the, you know, there was massive amounts of tension within the country about how restrictive the government had been over the last few years and this is one of the things that was implemented over the, a similar time span although obviously completely different thing that is maybe just a result of them relaxing restrictions on things to try and get back the um what do you call it the the goodwill of the the people and stop the the mass protesting that's been happening is to give them valorant yeah, give them yeah th toss Valorant, give uh, toss <laughs> Fearless Covenant at them and see what happens. Yeah, Bread and circus happens. for the people. Fearless Covenant. Allow them outside of their homes and then give them Fearless Covenant. <laughs> Let them play with Sosa and and like and all the other ones, and they're they're gonna really be happy now once they start playing. Well, actually, they won't. They're in different regions. They won't be able to play with Sosa. But, yeah, like, I mean, why just... why would anyone play Valorant when Pokemon Unite is there as well? I mean, mm. oh. try that. Try that instead. <laughs> it says. It says. Uh, they haven't approved games for 18 months, like yeah. international games. It was that long of a drought, yeah. so this is pretty big. Yeah, and crazy. and just to speak a little bit as well about like the influence that China has in League of Legends, the other Riot game is fucking huge, 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 huge. So, 
Uh, and one of the success criteria for Valorant since the beginning was getting adoption in Asia. And they've already done Japan. Korea's okay. If they if if we hit China as well, it's just like GG for the world in terms of <laughs> Valorant taking over. Yeah. I, I also I, I I think when when games get approved, I believe they get approved in their in the state that they were like when you send in, in yeah the state that you applied for so <laughs> china might be playing on the old oh, version of no. valorant, <laughs> like, the, like the release version of valorant for a while while they hot fix it all back Wait, up that's to, to crazy me. i'm not sure Man. i mean i don't really know how the how oh, it works shit. but <laughs> that's i've heard devs talking about that kind of stuff i think you're right i remember uh like around the time of like fortnite world cup uh this is a fortnite story sorry guys um they had these Chinese qualifiers where they were playing a completely different game of like super old, but also with like completely different rule sets. So you weren't trying to like survive the game. <laughs> you you the game would just like you would just try to stay alive, and the game would end at like t after ten minutes or something like that. And it was just such a wonky non battle royale format. I don't know what they were doing over there, but yeah, we might be playing. With the old icons. <laughs> oh, it'll all be back. Oh God, it's gonna be it's back. Can That's you imagine like the wild. FPX team uh, and the EDG team, but they they've been playing on the Hong Kong servers and the Singapore servers and now they have to play on the China oh, servers no. on this. It yeah, would just about be to absurd. Be studying the fish one, two, three VODs. <laughs> this is gonna be crazy. Uh, also the just yesterday the challengers format got announced. Um so there's some some more information here about how the tier two scene is going to work, and the tier two scene looks to be popping. The teams are really good, so it should be exciting. Um, but the the point of contention that I'm seeing a lot of discussion around is that six teams are automatically invited. Um, that that is kind of the main, uh, uh, yeah, point of discussion. I saw you talking about a little. I saw you talking about that on the timeline, Bala. You were posting tweets. Give me your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, Korea announced their format, and they announced their format, and a lot of the VRLs have already announced their formats. And basically, every single Challenger League has some level of invites and some level of open qualifier. So similar to how this year's Challengers went, kind of right, where all the team, like the top four NA teams, got invited. Yada yada yada. Um, that is kind of interesting since we already have a partnership system and we are we are also having open qualifiers into this anyways so in korea it's only two teams qualify and some of the vrls it's only one team can qualify and in na it's four teams are going to qualify for the entire year right so there's gonna be two open qualifiers and then they're in challengers for both splits and there's nobody else who can come back up into into vct essentially which is crazy. Um, but I also kind of understand why they would do that. I just think it's still crazy. I think it is utter dog. I think this decision <laughs> is very bad decision. I, I just, I, I don't get, I don't get it. I think it's also a massive failure of communication too. Some of the pros that were following up to your tweet and that I'd seen tweeting about some other stuff, Barla was saying that it looks like based on some of the invites that might be going out, that it was in some way based on having three out of five of a core or circuit points or they haven't announced what the criteria was to get invited. And maybe it's just clout. Maybe it's just somebody back there p picking people out of a hat, whatever the system is. But if you have some kind of system where it's based on last year's circuit points or where it's based on a, a team or whatever, then you need to tell people in advance when they're making their rosters because that informs where they're going to be. Like that informs career decisions of which team they want to join and how much money they want to go for and, you know, whether they think they're going to get an automatic spot in the league. It's really, really important stuff for the pros to know. And they've just kind of thrown it out here uh, with, without any explainer. So I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. You've already got invited teams in your top circuit. If you want big orgs to be involved, incentivize them to actually make good rosters. That's the whole way that the tier two circuit is supposed to work. Maybe maybe they had to sell certain orgs on this in order for them to stick around. Maybe it's a self-preservation thing for the tier two circuit, in which case, all right, maybe it's just a, uh, what do you say, like the, the uh, a required um, bad part of the scene where... All right, you know that it's a bit shitty, but if it helps the big orgs with a lot of money stick around, then maybe it's going to be worthwhile in the end. But until there's some kind of explanation of why they've gone for this system, I just don't get it. We had open qualifiers 
in 2021 uh, that worked pretty well and were the basis for you know big parts of the circuit functioning. Why, why not do that again? So, I, yeah, I, plus the rosters have changed so much, right? Yeah, obviously, there's yes. been so much roster movement by the last time we did it. Like, I, there is obviously you'll know players and orgs and and certain People rosters that maybe stay together, but it it, see, it still seems like I mean, we already had this discussion before too. This is not the first time we've had this discussion with the balance with the various VCT formats either with the qualifiers. Like, it is always a strange thing when like if our if there's so much time between them and teams are building new rosters automatically invite squads unless it's literally a team that the exact same squad that participated in a previous event right um, which is so no team no, at no, all, pretty much basically. none right yeah i don't think any of them really have done but that like m80 so. and na and maybe a few in the eu for sure yeah, yeah. i want so to I, I a full team hold on a sec even m80 aren't a full team though are they they're like no three, they have three or, uh, three out of yeah. five are you talking about teams that have stuck together sorry uh, like entirely, yeah. entirely, there's, entirely well, like a right, full five man roster. There's Shopify is pretty much all stuck together. They made one change. That's true. Phase yeah. yeah. seem to be sticking together. Um, I thought Flya left though from Phase. Uh, uh, yeah, po possibly. So they might be making one change, but still, yeah, four, four like, out of five. That's like four out of five. Four out of yeah. five is quite a bit. Sure. But I, I, hold on, could you pull up that um, timeline thing again, Kurt? There, because I want to. I want to double check this that I'm. I'm. I'm understanding this correctly. So the invited teams are invited to both challenger splits, the one in February yes. and the one in April. Correct. No matter how they perform in the first one, they're still right. invited to the second one no matter what. Yes. 16. Yep. Which is, yeah, that's Correct. a total departure from almost any of the formats up right. to this point. And there's only one open qualifying opportunity right at the beginning of the year. E two yes. tournaments, but yes. Two tournaments. Totally. And that'll determine and who's in for the first both split. splits. Yes. I mean, yes. that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, wanna, I just wanted to really clearly outline that, and then I'm going to give my opinion. That is stupid. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. You know, Why? the other thing that this will incentivize as well is that all of the people that miss out on the wave the first time in qualifying are then just going to be trying to jump into any of the other teams that they think look good. So halfway through the year, yeah. I mean, I don't know what the... I haven't dug into the rules for the Tier 2 system the same way that I did for Tier 1, but if there's not restrictions on, like, how much movement you can actually have within a roster, people are just going to try and pick up, like, the best players that missed out as the season goes on. And e even if, you know, if you're on, like, a, a mid-tier team, this would happen in, like, ESEA TF2 all the time and stuff as well. If you <laughs> If you... If your team functionally has like a, a either can't qualify or has a really low chance of making it to ascension, your best player is just going to leave to try and join one of the top teams, and it's yeah. just so so shit. That's one of the great things uh, last year about the LCQ that was in there about the multiple open qualifiers and like the way that you felt like there was still something happening all year, even if you'd missed out. Like sure, there was a couple of months of downtime, but it wasn't it wasn't just locked out of the whole year. Why had they gone backwards? It yeah. is also, I mean, so when you think of the challenger playoffs too, it's like how many teams get out of there? It's like uh, get to the challenger playoffs total. It's like uh, before they get to ascension. Like I'm trying to remember, but the, but the point being is that for both splits, it's they invite lot, 16 for both splits teams. either. But the second split, only two teams can uh, make it out, right? It's like four teams qualify, then two teams qualify. I believe is how it's how it's working for the for the split for one split two. So like it's even more top loaded than you'd ex than you even think. It's like it's it's the most top heavy thing I've ever seen. It's got a three hundred pound head. This guy, <laughs> this guy is, is in it's insane. Yeah, I I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I love this, this by the way. The oh empty bracket. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Kurt, if you go back to that timeline thing again, sorry, I'm just gonna keep asking you to pull that up because it is a helpful <laughs> graphic. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Wouldn't it just be better to do? Hear me out, everybody. Hear me out. Beginning of the year, January, open qualifier for all the teams that are going to be in the first split. Then, in the second split, the top six teams from the first split automatically invited. And before the second split, there is an open qualifier for six other teams. Thoughts. <laughs> Thoughts and opinions. I mean, wow. you're a genius. Thank you. <laughs> what, this is the smartest thing I've ever heard. In fact, give this man infinite funding. Our executives have been meeting in the boardroom for weeks and we couldn't come up with a solution like that. It's absurd. How, what, you just pulled that off the top of your head? <laughs> now, yes. I, I, I assume it's got to be, it's got to be something, right? The, the, if there is a logistical reason for it, it's probably because 
they couldn't squeeze anything in between the mid-season invitational and the challengers split two happening like that i i don't know that from from their scheduling point of view they must have thought that there wasn't enough time for a second open qualifier or something. But the teams I in the midseason know. invitation are not even probably playing in that yeah, shit so, anyway. Yeah, so you could run a yeah, if you just invited all the teams that made it to the midseason invitational, you could just run one that happened at the same time. Yeah, couldn't you? Yeah, it's, I also don't uh, go ahead, Mo, actually before I go ahead. I was just going to say speaking of like the ESCA leagues and stuff, like it's crazy that they can the, the amateur leagues can run eight weeks plus playoff tournaments or seasons or leagues or whatever you want to call them and do that four times in a year, but VCT can't do it one time in a year where you actually have promotions and up and downs and whatnot. That's what the tier two scene needs. It's just regular, you know, regular systems to play in where they can gauge their promotion and, and level and whatnot. This is just uh, a few teams slightly under partnership team who are going to potentially provide a little bit of uh, viewership. Is, I, I, is what I let, think they're going for. To yeah. play devil's advocate here for a second, I mean, what are the benefits to this system? The benefits are that you know that you're in for the entire year, basically, as soon as you get either through the open qualifier or invited, right? So you can actually invest long-term into your roster, I suppose. Mm -hmm. like you can actually justify spending on your Valorant roster because you know that you're going to get um, exposure out of it on a long-term basis the entire year. And I suppose the other thing, the counterpoint to that is that if you don't make it in, the org's just going to leave the whole year the players yeah. are going to too people and are going to retire players. but like, you know the, think about the positive <laughs> well, well, I mean, get... I, I, it's just wild it's, i have to say because like i don't understand when we're hitting on these points too i like the goal if the goal of your the tier two scene is like we need to create like it's, it's been stated like you know that's like the we want to have a tier two scene but in terms of a pure numbers perspective after the first two open qualifiers essentially it essentially means in North America, there will be like 16, 17 teams total competing for the whole year. No other teams could compete after the open, after like the initial part, part of the year. Yeah. After the beginning of the start of the year, 16 to 17 teams in North America will be competing for the whole rest of the year. And no, yeah. like there might be player movement, but that's it. Like that's pretty insane. And like, you know, positives. Yes, you get a lot of stability. And I understand why that, for some, you get a lot of stability for those sort of select groups, but okay. it's, Pretty, and then also out of those six, and even still, like obviously this is the system, so I'm not like going to complain about it too. But like even when we get filtered more to the top, it's what like I think one team from that that makes it from the two teams in North America that get to like ascension, right? Like one team theoretically could make it through the VCT, yes. I believe. It's like yeah. how it works. So like this is the most cutthroat thing. Ever. Like this is like the train arc for some sort of like fantasy story protagonist. Like this is the most cutthroat cutthroat level of competition like ever. When you think about how pre-selected it is. It's yeah, really I mean, it's, it's actually the Pretty Dune frustrated. prison planet. It's Seleucus Secundus in uh, format. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just going to create the ultimate warriors that manage to, to get through this to the top. I, 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 I do find it quite frustrating, though, because the, the <laughs> Tier 2 scene is looking so much more promising than in virtually any other game. Yet, this kind of decision is something that is just actively working against that i think i mean it's just it, there needs to be an open ecosystem and i think this is just too much of a limiting factor to have one tournament right at the beginning of the year that's open that's just not enough for the ecosystem to i think be truly open and successful i think it just i mean it's and i don't think it requires an immense amount of change just have another one in the spring so the teams that lose at the beginning of the year have more time because there are going to be good teams with good players that lose the first tournament and then if there was a second one will look better just because of the rosters are new and most of the teams a lot of the teams are taking off right now too and then it's just oh shit we have yeah. one chance in like two weeks we've been taking off for the holidays like that's crazy so i i think it's pretty frustrating that's uh, getting punished for lack of a grind set though really aren't they i mean if you really wanted it you would have been playing over christmas <laughs> if you yeah. really True. wanted it you would have told True. your nan no shut up eat your turkey i'm not joining yet i'm grinding <laughs> with my screen team. all right i uh, but we all right we've said that all that needs to be said it's time to move on and start getting towards the awards here this isn't really an award thing but kind of is we're gonna take a look back at our 2022 power rankings, and we're going to grade them like we're students trying to pass uh, a yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're just going <laughs> to go through really quick, 
little review. Let's just see how we did. <laughs> Let's just see how we did. Um, trying to get to the list here. So first up, we have the NA Stage 1 Challengers right at the top of the year here. So, boy, we thought, <laughs> Cloud9, wait a second. <laughs> what the hell is going on there? <laughs> that's fine. That, that's fine. There's some spaghetti sauce on the, on the stream deck. Um, okay, Good pause it. There we go. Button. There we go. This is in Wait, 2022? This is, this is just like the eSports Awards. There's yes. no way. It this is in 2022. This, this must have been the beginning of 2022. Very beginning. Like, no, this is I like just very thought, beginning. Basically before any games have been played, right? I thought yes. Optic were like... Mm, I thought must be after the open qualifiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, yeah, after the qualifiers. Right, because I mean, the guard are on there. there so some teams that means really the yes. guard qualified. So this is right before... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I, that was when Optic were still Envy. Okay. Can we go back to the power ranking, Kurt? Now, first of all, I want to say our top two, egregious. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> the top I, two, I'm gonna, appalling. Three, four, I, I, and five, I disagree. not bad. I disagree. I think Cloud9 is a very reasonable one to have in the top one position. They were crushing everybody, and they trolled. They were crushing everybody, yeah. and they trolled. Oh, I mean, they trolled, they trolled, they trolled, order. and we couldn't have predicted that. Cope? Yeah. Or, Do you guys want to see the results? The, the point is, they, no. we're in the future. We know the results, and they did <laughs> yeah, not we, we good, can't. which means it's a bad placement. Well, it's a, it's a bad placement. It, it is a bad placement, but our reasoning was was what, what, sound. What could no, you have put, I don't know if it was what could sound. You put, what could you have put? Could you have put uh, fucking, what, the guard version one optic? Like, Did we really? I mean... I, I'm, they still came third as well. My I mean, memories are like... fuzzy here, but Cloud9... Oh, they came in third in that one? I thought they yeah. tanked. <laughs> yeah, they still, yeah, they still I thought they tanked good. in that one, but maybe it was the second they, one. They, they tanked, tanked in the, the second one. Yeah, the okay. Second one. They okay, never mind. That one, not that bad. One. Good job, everyone. Yeah, that one's fine. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I mean, well the well Sentinels, was, Sentinels, well. Sentinels was the flop. Yeah, now that's Sentinels a rough was the real flop. Yeah, that but one was I think, bad. Also, okay, we didn't even have one, knights on this list. If you swap Sentinels and the Guard, that is a really good tier list. Yeah, if we Top just swap number two with number seven. Yeah, we could have popped but off, I do agree. <laughs> We could have yeah, popped actually. off. Can you imagine the public outroar if we had just put the Guard at number two and Sentinels two at Sentinels? number seven? Sentinels fans would have, they would have found us. They would have oh, had my <laughs> direct IP address. They would have known. If, 100%. if we did that, we would be heralded as geniuses forever. Well, true. <laughs> well, true. That would have been unbelievable. Um, this one's not we bad. We actually popped off. Good job, everyone. Yeah, I'm giving yeah. that an, it was, this was a great one. This was actually I'm great. giving that like an A-, minus, maybe a B+, plus, something like that. I think a B. Yeah, like sure. a B I, I think a B+. Plus. I think a B+. Plus. I think a B+. Because plus. when you think about the relative strength, I think a B+, plus is a fair... Like, this is like, if I'm talking about the rest of the class's papers, I'm looking at them, and it's like, well, you know, this, they got the spirit, but, you know, we got more than just the spirit. We got some accuracy okay. in okay. there. <laughs> Your teachers must have had a very lenient grading system, which I explains how you've school. got to the position you're at. <laughs> I went to a seminary school, okay? It was mostly based around texts of, of various faith-based natures. So. Okay, uh, <laughs> well, well, yeah. okay, let's move on to... Wait, we got, we got, <laughs> is that true? Wait, now what? we know. That's not <laughs> true. <laughs> Me when I lie, when I spread disinformation <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> All right, this one masters, I don't know if I want to look at. We have Masters Reykjavik. <laughs> this Let's, is bad. Oh, oh this Jesus! Is this is good. Wait, can we this make an? Bad. Can no. you Photoshop something on there before we show it? And it involves flipping something right side up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. Our greatest oh, kerfuffle yet. We put the guard in. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, but we had Fnatic with Durka oh. up there. How is Loud oh. fourth? I was literally calling them the winners. You and I—I I remember this ball. You and I were calling Loud the winners. Josh wanted Optic as the winner, Which so is, that was pretty base. Yeah, nice. Look at Bren. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Um, oh. holy shit! Um, I mean, God, God had just gone on an insane run, but oh yes, my yes. God, they flopped so yeah. hard. We, we did do, we a, did a, do a some flop here. and like a little fish but out then, of water. Wasn't this, wasn't this uh, Loud's first event as well? Yeah, it was Loud's first international but They were so event, yes. based. At the, they, they were just so, they were so based. based. I mean, that's they just hindsight Harry speaking. Yeah, actual no, it hindsight isn't. Harry. No, it wasn't. What are you talking about? Let's see 
the episode. Yes. Josh, hi, you think I would ever <laughs> hindsight Harry Pog about loud? Oh, I do it in real time, baby. I'm well, Harry yeah, Pog out of control you do. You do. in real time for loud. Okay? You do. Bola and I wanted loud first. I remember that for a fact. You wanted optic. Yep. Heads up. Listen, I'm giving you credit. Well done. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, so yeah. we predicted the winner. Pretty good. We have loud four. I think that's that's fine. Guard number that, two. Uh, yeah, that's we were capping. G2. The RX and fifth is G2 great. is so fucking troll. Why did we put G2 up there? G2, G2 played the most... because G2 G2 was coming up. They had come off like They're a winning really the good Platinum run. Award for most mid of all time. They, They're going to win they that award. They did not come off a good run. They barely like made no, their, no, was, well, their way back in because yeah, of the fucking war. They, they tore they, down Nookie, multiple teams. Nookie was in insane form. That's what it was. They, so they storm, looked yeah. they looked pretty decent. They beat Zeta Division at the event. Yeah, but then they Listen, I think we're kind of glossing over the biggest thing. Yeah, they We're did really play glossing over the okay. biggest thing. But no, there's two... nothing at the... What? This is fine. It, it was Zeta Division. Uh, <laughs> it was Zeta Division. Guys, we're so sorry. We're so sorry, Jermaine. You're like, you're like, Jermaine, we're so sorry. We didn't mean to do this. I'm so sorry. Connor, there's a problem with your mic. I don't know if you did that on purpose. <laughs> What's that? That's What happened? What happened? Okay. I'm sorry. Oh. The court. Oh. Order in the court. I, I, allow me to restore order. <coughs> Let's look at the list. Now, what I'm going to say here is Optic, great placement. I'll take it at first. Loud at fourth, that's fine. R2 and three, horrible. Atrocious. <laughs> I mean, oh, G honestly, look at this. G2 wasn't that far away. The, we had them at third. Oh, they had them fifth, sixth. I mean, it's that's oh not that God. bad. Okay, the, I, think it's, I think it's more egregious that we had Zeta Wait. and Paper Rex at the... Yeah, like, Zeta and Paper Rex were the two snubs of this. No, but G2 got yeah, a fucking yeah. playoff spot to play Zeta Division first. Like, that's... Oh, they, yeah. they, they were free ride. But did they, you can't say free ride about a team that ended up placing in third place. No, but they still I'm saying they got to the playoffs and then they fucking lost... The next two games, they had a. It was you remember. Yeah, you remember they went the, one and two. Yeah. Yes, they yeah, went that is one and two. In horrible yeah, situation. That was pretty bad. Hold on, Kurt, can you pull it up again? Sorry, the actual power ranking. So I can. <sighs> I just want to see the the. Dude, my eyes. I want to. <laughs> yeah, this this. I want to read up six. Read the rest also for audio people. But and then okay, DRX five, pretty good. Fine. Yeah. Fanatic six. Perfectly accurate. Fanatic well, we bombed all, out. We. We That's, only uh, thought yeah. they were losing Durka. They had multiple. Yeah, subs, they so. lost uh, multiple people. Uh, that was a pass really pass bad for event for Fnatic. Okay, I'll roll with that. Crew seven, is that close? Where were, I don't even know. No, crew no, bombed. No, down no. Down crew, well. crew had a rough. Yeah, but the egregious one. ones. I mean, Zeta was egregious. That was oh, the no, worst. I'm so not. fucking annoying. They were so poo yes. online. They're poo, poo, Agreed. poo. <laughs> and then they turned up to the event and they were so fucking good. Yes. Dude, I don't know what happened. They, they, drank the some of, they drank some of Watch Michael Jordan's Fox. special sauce and they just fucking exploded <laughs> at the event. We love Japan. We love Japan. We, we love, love Japan. Japan. We love Japan. Japan, we love, Japan. We love you. We Zeta love Japan. was our greatest mistake. Possibly yes. ever <laughs> on a power yes. ranking. Yes, Zeta was actually quite, that was the try. And, and we're Paper a over in the pan. They, Paper they X was just terrible too. Paper X was yeah, terrible. Yeah, we did underestimate Paper X. Wait, yeah. why? No, Paper X is fine. There's we no way. We put them way. in like eighth. Yeah, we had them at eighth. That's not I don't think that it would have been possible to, to spread them There's only 13 teams. That, that's like, that's pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, that is pretty bad. But percentage wise, that's pretty bad. This, that's pretty bad. This was Paper X. This was Paper X's like, uh... They're coming onto the like blow up game, blow up tournament. Wow, dude, I can't, I can't words today. What, break is, the out. Word, what is the phrase? Break out. Break out. There we go. Break out event. But okay, we had event. Zersha ninth, pretty good. Liquid tenth, pretty good. NIP eleventh, yeah. pretty good. I, we really, this is actually outside of Zeta goated. being goated. horrific. Our prediction. Uh, this is actually not that bad. This is an F. <laughs> I, would give it a, I, I think no, this is I like a, a D, not C D or C. D or this a C is, minus, is max. I think I C minus. A... We predicted the winner. We picked the winner, Josh. No, you got the... get an F. We got the winner. We got loud pretty close. DRX on the money. Face up. I'm sorry. Guard G2 is... This <laughs> is also, we, Actually, we also yeah, we knew this. that Xerxes... No, no, no. It's a, this is, this it's a it's D minus. It's a D. You get D. You got the winner. if you're correct about the winner. Yeah, never mind. This was actually awful. It's a D. D for dismal. All right. Masters 2 Copenhagen. 
Masters to Copenhagen. What did we do with this one? God, I don't know. I think this one was... I can't remember this one, I have a feeling we just fucking picked Optic Loud and then... We probably did. Yeah, we definitely did. Like, I mean, loud. Loud is going to be overrated here, hundred percent, right? And because Optic they went out in groups. Where I think too. Well, actually, Optic still did. No, Op though. Optic did fairly well. Well, no, uh, Loud can't be overrated. They they stomped their region again. Yeah. Uh, before Copenhagen, and there's no way that they like. After, no, after I mean, they just come off a good just, international. In comparison course, to the so. results, sure. Yeah, but... I just mean compared to the results. I don't mean that we overrated them compared to where you should have. I'll tell you what, a constant theme here is the fanatic cope mm -hmm. coming out of my camp. That was Josh. That yeah, was unbelievable. That was Josh. Yeah. Fraud team. Looking yeah. back on this year, <laughs> yeah. the, the Plachow Award for the fraud team of the year is fanatic. <laughs> the, the, the award for the team that has taken all of my hopes by playing well domestically and then just covered the bed in fecal matter when it comes to land <laughs> is fanatic. Fanatic fraudal Ew. fecal matter. Uh, Josh watches like them put Hilarious, up one cause... cool lockdown, and he's like, "Fanatic, the best team in the world." <laughs> Kurt, Still got top the rankings, fours, by the way. I want to read some of these out loud again, just so. So we had Optic first, reasonable. They placed third, right? So that's fine. Um, Fanatic second, Giga Cap, Loud in three, reasonable at the time, but they finished in what, like twelfth or tenth, something like that. Yeah, I can't yeah, they got group. But, they but lost I'm, not, I'm not giving us minus points for that. That yeah. they, they had an insane group, and they um, paper X fourth, not bad, not bad. DRX fifth on the money as always. How FPX do we underrate FPX. Well, Did I think we it's because we thought FPX were having subs. No, 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 no. Look, look, the FPX no, no, no. and with FPX subs. with subs, oh. and both of them are five points below where they should be. Both of them exactly yeah. five points below okay. where yeah, they should bad. be rated. <laughs> I mean, that's egregious underrating of FPX. We, we have long-term biases hating that team for what they've done to us in 2020 and yes. 2021. Yeah, that is... That's exactly what it was. That is we egregious. We had X set in six. They just went 0-2, right? And finished 7th, yeah. eighth. So, like, technically it's close, but... And then also, guys, I'm sorry that I, mean, I got us why? to get North Epson in seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's the rebound. Like we did, we did Japan dirty last time, so it was the rebound. I mean, that actually was, I'll, we did not want to I'll piss take off the Japan. Blame. I'll <laughs> yeah. take the blame for that one. Um, Leviathan in eighth. Still I'm surprised off. we had them at that high. I don't. Well, no, they had a guaranteed placement in. Oh, right. The yeah. Yeah. So and we were literally to... predding. We, we predded Leviathan to go zero and two. And That's they what went we one and two, and they almost they almost beat Fnatic. They almost they were yes. they were doing. They I mean, Fnatic finished event. what like fourth or something in this tournament. Yeah, they finished fourth. fourth. Yeah, they finished. Fourth. So that's not egregious that we had them in second. But but Leviathan should have been placed more like sixth, probably. Yeah, they should have been above. I mean, yeah, realistically, they should have been above North Epson and probably Exet. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> oops. And then we had Zersha ninth, Guild tenth. Also, we 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 messed up with Guild. They made yeah, it further into playoffs it. by a bit. But it's but it's not like but they that had, much. I mean, they're dude, still the seventh day. They had the <laughs> reasoning was they had optic, loud, and crew in their group. We yeah. just put yeah. optic and loud through, and there was no hope yeah. for them. It, it, and I, no I specifically hope. remember that because um, we were arguing for them, and we were just like, "But they can't make it out of group, so put them in tenth. Like that was yeah. what we were talking about. Yeah, you, you know what? We we trolled this power rankings in particular by taking into account like the you get guaranteed into playoffs or you're in a difficult group we should have just gone based off the power of the teams yes we're, we're trying to do like a predictions inside the power rankings and it has fisted this power ranking That's this one might actually be the most random this one looks like you just rolled a, a d20 and assigned the places <laughs> randomly it's so bonkers it doesn't have the obviously dumb shit that the previous one did but it's just it's just bizarre <laughs> yeah and then we had crew 11th and fpx with subs in last which okay subs have absolutely tanked teams in the past it just that was just not the case with FPX. And uh, we already because... had proof that they play well with subs too. Like we already had proof. This it is was... an F. This I'm is gonna say F. This already. one was shit. This oh. was awful. This yeah. is this is the this is terrible ball. This is a <laughs> okay. Okay. this is a <laughs> right, fine. fine. This is fine. a horrible display F. of our. I mean, I feel like prowess. I feel like this is mostly you're reacting to this almost exclusively because like what? What are our two biggest downsides? The FPX and what? Maybe North Epson are the two and... worst ones in that. Probably we didn't get two any. Were, but I mean, guild we, and wait, I mean, wait, we wait. just don't have anybody at any good places. Paper, the only paper one is, DRX. is pretty fucking cool. 
Yeah, I, I mean, Paper Rex, we had like a pretty. We had we just I mean, them at the same point. They came in Reykjavik. <laughs> That's pretty cool. No, they didn't. They, they, but uh, also, we oh, did. We right. did screw up Loud <laughs> as well. Right. Loud also, we kind of just screwed up. Literally, the yeah, bad. only bad. team that we got correct was DRX. Every <laughs> other team is wrong. This has to be an F. Yeah, <laughs> like, That's just yeah. so bad. Fair enough. Fair enough. That DRX is necessary. the most consistent team of 2022. Plaid Chat Award for the most consistently mediocre. Does not, in fact, go to G2. It goes to DRX. They're not on an update. What? It was just a one-off. I, I'm, I'm, I, I would love to, to, <laughs> no, to, to bit what are you, you on talking that about? shit point They're you just definitely raised, not but we got to keep the show moving. Um, Consistently <laughs> mediocre in terms of global events. Sure, maybe. Sure, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. But... Uh, all right, Champions Istanbul Power Rankings. Lord, I hope we did Noted. this one right because Game Noted. Changers is next, and uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope we got Istanbul right. What are we looking at with Champions, Kurt? All right, number one FPX, not egregious. <laughs> it number was so dumb. We just put the fucking winners at the top every time. <laughs> well, yeah. Because, yeah, but there was nothing between the tournaments. You know, there's no. It's uh, it's tough to not. Yeah, we didn't have way. we didn't have any other data points. Oh, we can use. blame Benkai for this one. That's good. Um, oh, actually, true. Number one. Yeah, I FPX. mean, Paper X literally went out in groups. Yep. <laughs> if that yeah, isn't Paper X was a disaster. Yeah, I mean, that's such just... a curse having Benkai on. But FPX one, that's okay. We had Paper X two. We fucked up. Optic third, <laughs> that's fine. They came in second. Actual. I think that's pretty good. Fanatic fourth, they finished. Fold. Did they? What did they finish in? Fraud. Fraud. Fifth six. Okay, not yeah. terrible. Loud fifth, not awful, but they won, so it's not great. But you know, we at least had them in the upper <laughs> echelon. <laughs> <laughs> we had, uh, uh, speaking of no data points, we had no data on Loud or any of these teams, actually. Wow. Now they fucking think about Yeah, there was just no it. time. Yeah. There was they just nothing between the events. Uh, so they just went last. So, I mean, it makes fucking, it makes sense. Yeah. And then we had DRX sixth um, because they always placed fifth, sixth. This was the time they finally broke through. I mean, I'm not mad at that. We had Crew seventh. How, how did Crew get into seventh? I don't know. You were Over on the Levy episode. Atana. What did you Is say? Crew even at champions? <laughs> what did you do? No, crew, they got grouped. Crew got grouped. Oh, How did they, they do it? Yeah. Who, who put them into seven? You no, know no, I remember. <laughs> it was Mimi. I remember it was Mimi. Mimi was fighting so hard for some reason for crew to be in seventh. It was absolutely Mimi. I see Mimi. a pattern. I see a it pattern. It was absolutely what? Mimi. The, the look at the that, pattern look, at the look on her face. Blaming, the me, what I'm about to spread this information on the power ranking. Just, no, it, I, the pattern is she did, it to, she did the crew thing twice in the next oh, one, too. Oh, right, in the Game Changers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we had Liquid 8th. What did Liquid even finish in this tournament? Liquid, actually, it's not, that's not, went, they, that's not all. Eight. They finished 8th, I believe. Literally yeah, we got that one right, oh, okay. yeah. They finished 7 eight Oh, my God. Time, and so. You know what, Nine. EDG. That's and not bad. Gaming. I don't think no. that's that bad. We we were we were we were so split between being super high on the cope and they're gonna bomb out and be shit. And we actually that the group that they were in was the closest group that actually had really competitive games between them, Liquid, Leviathan, and, and they uh, go Paper X. And it also had the group with the most fucking flops and playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Did they yeah, win? Yeah, every gaming, every gaming was two. was a little. Yeah, but. Y'all yeah, were no, that, yeah, no, that was, yeah, yeah. No, that, that was, was we just you wanted, you guys rated the, the, the underground Chinese circuit so heavily. But also, oh, dude, this it, is making me sad for Paper X again. Oh. Yeah, that is, that is quite sad. Um, could you pull up the list again, Kurt, please, the power rankings? So that Edward one, egregious. Leviathan in 10th, egregious. How the fuck, how did we put Leviathan in 10th and crew in 7th? Where is Mimi to answer for these crimes? I, I mean, I mean we Mimi just... actually has to get a hearing, a congressional hearing for that one. I mean, that is unacceptable. Zershin Can we 11. listen to what uh, Connor's TV has to say about what Mimi did? Oh, yeah. My t I don't know what my TV is. Everybody, shh, for a second. The mic will pick it up. I have a noise gate, so we won't pick it up. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get it. It's uh, some, some World War II thing. Bala's bit idea crushed by technology. Uh... Yeah. And Unlucky. then we had oh, X set in 12th. Jesus. 100 Thieves I mean, this, in 13th. This is awful. Zayden this 14th. Furia boom. Oh my god. To be this fair, if I had been there, if I, if, if I, uh, I don't know who was down so terribly on X set. I guess it's, I mean, we didn't, what data do we have on them post I mean, they, Copenhagen? They, they bombed out in the first tournament they went to. They looked dreadful. Yeah, they looked really and then bad, right? They'd looked, they'd looked decent like they were on a bit of a come up but they didn't look they, they looked good don't get me wrong they look good
but I think everyone just didn't really believe that they were going to get out of their group and um, do that. Da- oh, no, they they got straight through the playoffs, didn't they? Wait, am no, I no, misremembering? No. no. The champions is all groups. Okay, so yeah. where what group were they in? There was something they weird. I remember on the Zersha episode about it. And, FPX. Yes. Um, yeah. Like, Zersha and FPX. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, and I mean, then also they had to play, and then then uh, they ended. Did up, we really not like expect them to get out of this group? Actually, looking back on it, how did we not have FPX and Exit? As the I think the logic at the time was we had only seen them beef. It's possible that they will just be better and comfortable on land the second time, but there's literally no way to know, and we haven't seen them since Copenhagen. So we're just going right, to place is another them F. Wrong. This yeah, is the, another F. This one's Garbo. But we got the top parts right, kind of. I'm giving it a D minus. This is goaded. <laughs> goaded. No. We got the we got Not the enough. upper echelon correct, so I'm giving it a D minus. We got boom correct as well. Guys, we can't the grade bottom. all of our own power rankings F. Like, yeah, that's I think it's a, I think it's a D. everything. Okay. How does this compare to what was it? I uh, think the last power. I think Copenhagen was way worse than this one. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Absolutely. Actually. Copenhagen was so much worse we, than this. We got the top. Like, there was the still some. Right in the bottom. Honestly, if it wasn't for crew X set like swapping here and the over rating of EDG, it's pretty bad. Oh, there's, so, there's so many yeah. things wrong, but all right. Like, there's a lot of things well, wrong, yeah, but, but we wrong, think of the overall like, by, by a couple places in comparison to. Yeah. Okay. This, right. is, this was like this is a mind, this is like a beef, but it wasn't like an insane beef. Yeah, uh, we did well here, guys. guys. This is guys. This, this <laughs> might be goaded. <laughs> this is really good. This good is work. really good. I. uh... I don't know how we're gonna talk our way out of this one. Pull it up, Kurt. Which one? Okay, but okay. To be fair, Which this one, this one is not. This one's Which not one? on us. Like he this wasn't, one's not totally like on us. Like he wasn't so a part this is, of this. The whole world. The whole world. No, no, on surely. This one. No, come on. What the game changers? This is goaded. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think it is goaded. We had one, we had one fuck up. You did one? not have one fuck up. One fuck yeah. up. He says. One. Okay, Bala. What is the one fuck up? One. Uh, uh, crew being the dark horse. They were fucking the. Ball. The... I, I have well, a better question. Mm. What did we get right? <laughs> <laughs> like Finnell, everything sort of. is wrong Finnell, Finnell, except right. for no. Finnel. Mm. Finnel. Finnel was correct. Finnel, we got right. I thought, Sa- oh, correct. We also got. Oh yeah, okay. um, oh, yeah you're right. Sapphire I, I wasn't Sapphire. like insanely wrong. Sa- the X10 Sapphire wasn't insanely wrong. But Finnell, those two, Finnell, we got directly right. The Sa- X10 Sapphire, we got sort of correct. Dude, look at my face. I'm not going to lie. I, 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 think the, I think the Cloud9 White <laughs> number one is still very defensible. I, I, obviously, it was wrong. Of course it was But defensible. I think it's, it's very, it is very easy to defend that. It is very not easy to defend number two pick. Well, well you, know, you know, actually, you know what else here? Now, this, Mimi was on this episode again. <laughs> Maybe it was on this episode again. The crew, this issue with crew here uh-huh. is it seems to be a reoccurring. Now, also, you had Dan, you had Dryad too, so I'm sure that also didn't help. But like, you had Mimi, and this Mimi seems consistently the to be the issue. This you know is what the worst. What I've noticed as well is when you get. Um... Listen. What? what? <laughs> okay. Go on. When, <laughs> what? when you get. Um... When you, oh God, that's just throwing me off completely. When you get oh, yeah. guests on the show, like when Benkai came on, Paper yeah. X, way overrated. When we've got Dan on, okay, crew, hold up. The way Benkai one, overrated. he did not want to rate ba- pa- Paper X up there. By the way, it was just but, us. It was the the people, I, uh, the other people. I'm not saying. I, I, here's my theory. It's not because the guest advocates for it necessarily. It's that we're socially awkward people pleasers, <laughs> and we want them to be happy with us. So we're, ooh, let's shuffle them up a power rank. It's ooh, you happy with me now, Benkai? Oh, let me tickle your balls. And then they just end up in unreasonable positions. This is a different situation, though, because I remember Bala was coming into it being happy that everybody else was huffing the croupium. Hold on. No, I was Speak upset, actually. No, you I weren't. Was no, no you I were was not. mad because I wanted to be the guy who took all the credit for oh, yeah. drawing the dark horse. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> A lot of credit right, going well, around there. So uh, now I'm happy because I get to put the blame on other people, but... <laughs> I'm, uh... I'm gonna go ahead and give this uh, uh, as an F, and I think it's time to move on. <laughs> I think Mimi should answer for her crimes. That's what I think. I think Mimi should answer for her crimes. Yeah, microwave right. is finished, by the way. <laughs> go get the popcorn for these awards, Connor. There we go. Right. I swapped it. Guys. Up.
It's oh. time for the Plat Chat Awards. <clears throat> First up, the Plat Chat All Stars. The best controller. Who's it gonna be? Ooh, is it gonna be Scuba? <laughs> Who's going to be the best <laughs> controller? Hopefully. It could, we is it going to be? I'm holding. How long should I hold? Perhaps Song? <laughs> Perhaps oh, Song. Oh, oh, he's not even. The nominees. We've, we've got some nominees, baby. We got Marv, Mako, Pancata, Mind Freak, Sugar Zero. Who's going to take it? I'm opening the envelope. The winner of the best controller is... Mako, the best controller of oh, the year. Okay. Hmm. I, this, is, this is truly a shocking reveal to me. By the way, <laughs> we, 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 didn't, we didn't we didn't intro this at all. Kind of just ran into it. We all voted on these. Yep. We yeah, diligently yeah, yeah. Yes. voted on every we single all one of these. Voted yes, we on did. all of these, and somehow we, we, did. we arrived. So who here voted for Mako? Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're one gonna undermine the integrity of the <laughs> show here. No, it means Brenda and Mimi and uh, Kurt oh. all voted yeah. for Marco. And right? Remember Kai when we all went Dan. to the polls? We were all there at the ballot box, <laughs> ready to do our votes together for Marco. Uh, Ooh, those mail-in ballots. If it weren't for those, <laughs> Marv would have won. <laughs> I remember when Kurt said, don't worry, I'll put your vote in the box. And I said, oh, thank you, Kurt. And so, you know, that's... Really helpful for them. If you look at VLR's rating system, Mako is the highest rated controller out of all of the lands this year. Uh, so there we got go. some stat Stevens on the broadcast today, huh? Well, yes. I, well. I also think that um, Marv had a very, not very poor, I mean, it was poor, but it was very poor in comparison to Marv's measures, uh, champions. Like, it yeah. was way, way below standard, whereas Mako was consistently putting up like the be like some of the best controller performances at event after event after event. Um, yeah, I, I think it, I think it genuinely comes down to like how you how you weigh the tournaments because if you do weigh them more heavily, the deeper they got into the year, uh, you know, in terms of importance, if you weigh champions as like two X or masters or you know however you would do a weighting system like that, Mako is going to come out ahead because he played a lot better towards the end of the year than Marv did, but Marv was nuts at the uh, the first, I mean, the first tournament especially, mm -hmm. but um, also during the group stage, I believe, of Copenhagen, he was nasty too. But then he just didn't do it that much in the playoffs. Marco's always been there as like the 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 guy that's punching right up with Marv. And I think, yeah, you, there's a great argument that he overtook him at champs because he was filthy, absolutely disgusting, easily the best player on DRX. And that was with Buzz on jet doing jet things. And Mako was still just having wild impact. All right. I mean, it's not unfair. Not an unfair vote by any means. No. I think this... Thank you so much, uh, the Plat Chat State Media, for selecting my vote. And I, <laughs> I agree with it wholeheartedly. <laughs> I agree with it wholeheartedly. All right. Next up, the best initiator of the year. Your nominees, Stacks, Saucy, Crashies, Shao, mm. and the big guy himself, BCJ. The winner of the best initiator is... It's Shao. FPX's own. Mm. I mean, I think that's pretty damn reasonable. Uh, given yeah. the, the absolutely out-of-control performance he had at uh, Copenhagen to win that event, was super solid at champs as well. Always consistent, but... The level of gameplay in that time period was just obscene. There's some demonic players in this category as well, actually. Like, the nominees are spectacular, but I, I feel like Xiao is the only one of them that, that won his team a tournament. I feel like when, when Loud win their tournament, Sassy's playing fantastically, but it's not like, uh, it's not like what Xiao did at Copenhagen. Xiao was winning so many of those clutches and dragging his team through the situations where Sugetsu wasn't there. It was a magical run. It really was something spectacular to behold. He went, reminder, 25% clutches, and he had 80 attempts, which that is, is insane. a lot. I mean, that 21 clutches over the entire tournament is ridiculous. And, that is bonkers. And it, there, were, there were so many of them that were just in, not only uh, like paired with Sugetsu, but they just consistently were... Um, game saving clutches in a lot of cases yeah like completely game saving sometimes on thrifty rounds like he was a beast at copenhagen and it's not like he slowed down any any point if if we saw him at uh 
Reykjavik as well? Shh. I mean, if we saw FPX at all at Reykjavik, we might have seen literally this entire team just be FPX of yeah, the All-Stars. Uh, yeah, definitely. Because I, I feel like that's what people forget, right? Is that they they won EMEA in that, uh, that time period and just weren't able to attend at all. And yeah. then they are able to attend the next time and just absolutely crush the playoffs when they have their full team there. So we could be living in a very different world where <laughs> FPX are easily the best team pre-partnerships, uh, whereas it is, it is Optic in the reality that we exist in. Yep, true. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that audio was. Okay. The Duelist of the Year. Your nominees. Osboss, Durka, Forsaken, <laughs> Jing, and Scream. The winner I mean, of the Duelist of the Year. It is Osboss from Loud. Pretty worthy winner. In my humble and biased opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Wyatt State Media. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, it's pretty hard to like think about how like his performance was. I, I remember when they when we were, I was still doubting Brazil and Loud showed up to that first international event, even though they didn't do like incredible. I was still like, this guy, this guy is Omega Pog, and then he, and then they went on, went on to win champs and had like an insane run. Like Aspas was actually fucking legendary. So. It's hard not to rate him. Yeah, all the roles are all messed up as well. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, I mean it's it, it, this is part of the but, problem this year is that Chamber existed the entirety of the year, and he's both a Sentinel and a Duelist. So you yeah, gotta definitely. just. I think the the, the Duelist category is for people that are playing a, a significant amount of Duelist, but it's just the roles in the game are just were so chaotic this year. It's hard to pin it down to an exact formula, you know. He was, he was probably playing the most Jet before Champions, and then also yeah. was playing Raise on Binds, which yeah. a lot of the other, you know, like, um, Yay and people like that were not, were not doing it all. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Forsaken was playing Yoru um, in a lot of instances. Jing was playing Raze so often, and, and Neon and some of those comps, you could put those types of people there, but... Just wait till we get to the flex roll. That's all I'm gonna say. That's just yeah. fucking crazy. No, it doesn't. I mean, I, I was a, yeah. The that that roll is just nuts. But all right, isn't it crazy though? Just to just to consider that Aspas was a ranked demon before this year. Like the guy didn't really have a team that he was known for, or you know things that he'd accomplished in the scene, and yet he just comes into this Brazilian super team in 2022, and they win champs by the end of it. And, uh, the that, real trend. Just, it's crazy. Yeah, the actual, yeah, the real <laughs> trend. <laughs> All right. And now, the best Sentinel of the year. Oh, God. Your nominees. Soigetsu, Artis, Laz, Soy Cryozels, and Soigetsu. <laughs> Soigetsu. Uh... What, what's the problem? Mm. Me when I watch him eat tofu on stage when they, when they have us, just so we get to over here. And the winner is one, I mean, this one is person that plays Cypher in this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and the winner of the best Sentinel. <laughs> My God, it's Yay. Who saw that? Who saw that ah, coming? Wow. It's Yay. Yeah, I mean, the stupid chamber. But he's 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 gone, right? <laughs> Now, did Soigetsu can win this year? <laughs> he can I win would, this okay, coming so, year. Okay, so let's say if we were to caveat, if we were to put a caveat where if we remove Chamber... Yep. <laughs> would, are, you, chamber, are you asking if Ye would have still won? Would Ye still have won? <laughs> and the answer is no. How would this affect Ye's legacy? I would have legacy? probably. I would probably have not. But you know what? I, I think it's hard to... Then we would just remove what? Like 70, 80% of the year? More? I can't remember I mean, exactly. The, the entire, the entire year, year? Yeah, the entire year, really? I yeah. mean, if we removed oh, Chamber, yeah. uh, Sagetsu would win this by default because the other four guys just play Chamber. So. Don't play Sentinel. Uh, Artist played Cypher once on Pearl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. True. That. Didn't Lance play some other stuff competition. as well? Maybe not, Maybe. actually. I can't remember Did he played Killjoy in a sense? Yeah, I feel like he played KJ at some point. I don't know. Dude, all I want to see is Ye actually play Killjoy this year. <laughs> <laughs> and IGL at the same time, too. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, he, he's a freak. I mean, he's just easily the best. Yeah, I mean, he was just the best player of the year. Like, best I player mean, of the year, yeah. Come on. All right. The flex of the year. 
And th <laughs> boy, this just this one is tough because well, what is this? Is a well defined role anymore? in the game. <laughs> I don't even. What, I mean, what is the attached SpongeBob independent coffee house pick? <laughs> I don't know who I voted for. I have no explanation for it. I don't know why I chose this. <laughs> what I made is this it? like two weeks ago. <laughs> the best flex. You some nominees: King, Alfier, Zipan, Zekin, and Asana. The winner of the best flex award. My God, it's Perk Thirty Fish Fillet. It is Zekin. He has won <laughs> the flex of the year. I mean, pretty reasonable. Zekin. Kind of had a, a, a sicko year. And especially that last Champions Tournament, he was just otherworldly for, for Exet in Istanbul. Yeah, I mean, that's the crazy thing, actually, about the first time that they went to LAN, too, is that Cryo and Zekin were both still popping off. Yep. And the players that were letting them down were, were the, the veteran players that had been in that situation before. But uh, he is nasty. And also, I don't really know what a flex player is anymore, but... Nope. Whatever it is, Zekin is one of them. Is Alpha your... I mean, like, didn't he almost exclusively play Rays? He played like, well, uh, Viper and Killjoy. Yeah, Viper. Oh, that's Killjoy. true. Yeah, I forgot and about Viper. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah that's true. I forgot about his other... I just... My mind blanked on his shit. No, I, 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 was, I was saying this to Kerr when we were looking at the players. Like, at the beginning of the year, I think the flex role was pretty ironed out. It was the guy who played, like, Rays and then played KO and Sky. Yeah. And then by the end of the year, it was just chaos. Yeah. It was just... <laughs> Go on, I think it's still good that we stick stuck with these roles because they're always going to be defined this way, even though the agents are going to and the comps or whatever are going to yeah. push people out or whatever. Maybe someday there just won't be a Sentinel plate or something like that, something stupid, but I don't see that coming for a while. I mean, we're, we're about to head into the triple controller meta, and then oh. what are you going to do? <laughs> then what are you going to do? One of, your, one of your controllers is the Sentinel controller. <laughs> <laughs> The terminology is going to get so dumb so quickly. Um, the, our all-star team that we've constructed here um, would struggle massively with communication issues. That's fine. I, you are correct. They would still slop. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. you're that good, you don't need your voice to communicate. It's just don't need to calm. intuition. You don't need to calm at all. You no like, communication. It's like when I went to a wrestling match in South Florida, and they had a young blood Japanese wrestler who's from abroad, didn't speak very much English. He was paired with a guy named Delirium that only spoke in gibberish. So they could not communicate at all in their tag team duo. So he'd be on the sidelines being like, hur, 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 like trying to talk to the guy, and the Japanese guy would be like, I don't know what the fuck's happening, and they'd have to just tag each other out and like use nonverbal communication. <laughs> That's essentially what our all-star team would be. Wow. You know, all five of these people have played Jet before as well? Like for some period of time. Oh, really? That, that's the key. That is the key that's to, to creating a god tier mm. roster. Jet the players. Just make everyone, may have everyone be a jet player, finally. Yep. A lot's going to pop off then, because Tui's that boy Jets. True. That boy Jets. True. That boy. All right. This next award, boy, it doesn't get more prestigious than this. It's the second best player of the year award. <laughs> 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 it just doesn't fuck. get more prestigious wow who's gonna take down this one and that's because yay is just so clearly the best player of the year i mean all of you little debate lord fucking andes can be like oh well actually no one cares it was yay everyone knows it was yay it was yay yay was the best player of the year so who's the second best player of the year is the real question. I mean, this is a hotly contested, this is a this hotly is, contested award, honestly. This is hotly contested. Oh, so it just took a little peek. <laughs> we just saw the first letter. The second best player, oh wait, we, oh, 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 the nominees. I forgot, the nominees. The nominees are Xiao, Soigetsu, Aspas, Mako, and Artis. Two time. Oh. God, Platch had a war winner coming up right here. Crazy. My God, it's Aspas again. He takes it down. <laughs> he takes down two awards. And uh, I may have had some amount of influence in this decision making. <laughs> I mean, the I thank you, thank you, Flat Chat State Media. Thank of course you, so you did. Much. You voted, Wyatt. Yes, with yeah, my vote we in all our voted. democratic system. <laughs> I you. spoke. I, I spoke at the ballot. <laughs> 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 um, I remember when Wyatt was watching the polls to make sure that my vote was legitimate. I looked at that. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> I mean, I think that's, I think Ospos is a worthy recipient. I, I think he, he was just rock solid all year. 
turned up for Loud when they needed him. Even when Loud was struggling, he was still the guy that was on point. I think he just had a phenomenal year from start to finish, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's I think it's really up in the air as well once you go to the second best player. There's there's uh I don't think there's gonna be many years like this where there's such a clear and obvious winner for MVP of an entire year. But I think it's probably because Chamber was just so <laughs> so present for the entire period of time. I don't know how often we're gonna have meta games like that, but yeah. uh, Aspas could play whatever his team needed him to. And that ended up being an extremely underrated aspect of playing primary duelist for a team. It freed up the rest of his squad to mess around with um, what they were playing a lot more. By the yeah. way, it's like uh, no surprise that the first person, well, I guess it kind of is a surprise. The first person to really pick up Chamber was the guy who was the most broken with him the entire year. Like, because uh, Ye was the first guy and every, yeah. everybody was like, oh, is Chamber actually really that good? And Ye was just like spamming him on every single map and everybody was still playing to that. Um, but I'm, a I'm actually a little sad that Lust didn't get a shot in any of this because I feel like, well, if there was like a breakout player of the year or something like that, maybe it would go to him. But he was also instrumental at almost the same level that Aspas was in that champion's win, uh, I would say. So, but yeah. well-deserved for Aspas. Uh, I think... Uh... I think Sassy too. Man. I mean, the guy's such a, a a beast. He's just been there for them. Uh, apart from the one tournament where Loud played really poorly, and he did as well in Copenhagen, uh, the rest of the year has just been rock solid from him. And he's just gone from strength to strength. If you think about what he was doing at the beginning of the game as well, playing for Vikings, he, he really has just been at the core of every top team within the region and just seems to look... To, uh, if there was anybody that I could point to to say he's going to continue to have a lot of success in the future, um, I think it would be sassy. And it sentinels that ring next year. For sure. <laughs> For sure. 100%. The ring. All right. Next up. The coach of the year. The nominees are Bazooka, Psycho, Doom Bros, Chet, and MCE. Some pretty worthy. This is some good coaches right there. Some, there's some good coaches in this scene. All right. The winner. God damn it, it's Chet from Optic Gaming. The Coach of the Year Award. You I want mean, to talk about a narrative turnaround. What a narrative turnaround to where we started to now. <laughs> if were, that's pretty crazy, actually. Yeah. yeah. The, the multi-game champion in uh, CS and Valorant. Just The team was ultra consistent all this year. First team to adopt Chamber. We guys were kind of just, just talking about with Ye, but you know made some great decisions in regard to the comps. Um and how they were playing at the top of the year that allowed them to win Reykjavik, remain super consistent all year after that. Um, just a big part of that. So deserves a shitload of credit for, for the success and the legacy that Optic are leaving behind as like the, the team of the pre-franchised era. Yeah. Uh, and when you listen to interviews with him as well, at the beginning of the year when people were really down on him saying that he was shit because he'd worked with other teams before and they, they'd basically had no success and the roster moves didn't make any sense and that kind of thing. And he said that when he came into Optic, I think they were called Envy at the time still, that he just took a while to see how the team functioned without him really doing anything. And that's when everyone was saying, what the fuck is this guy doing? Is he even doing anything? And then it, at some point he's do, saying in interviews like, no, I'm starting to take like a lot of control, giving them comps, telling them what to play. And you just saw the success of the team go up and the creativity go up and the interesting things and the meta leading just go up and up and up. So you can, you can literally track his... Uh, his impact within the team to such a degree as well over the course of the year. It's got such a clean narrative of just, yeah, you can tell this comp was made by Chet. You can tell this set play was made by Chet. You can see exactly how he's had impact in all of these big matches. It's sick to see. It was literally a meme last year. <laughs> and Optic as well. Like the team fucking was the bog standard team before um, this year, right? They were just constantly running very standard stuff. Just everybody had their own same roles. And then this year comes around and there you, you see it. I mean, you're right, Josh. They, they just start doing the stuff the right way. And I think he set the model. And I also don't think that you can even, like, I think about FPX, I think about Mech, and uh, this might be blasphemy coming out of my mouth, but, like, you always see comps and ideas that are just like, this is this is dumb. Like, why are you guys doing this? Like, it makes no sense. FPX with the Yoru shit, like, constantly throughout the year. For Optic, there was... No examples of that. 
Every single one, except maybe what? The Josh's icebox face. Cup? What? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Josh's face. <laughs> what? Go ahead. The Phoenix Chamber Killjoy on Haven it was popped it off. Worked. It worked. It popped off. It looked exceptionally ultra troll, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> it did work. <laughs> All right. The next award. <laughs> what? <laughs> the next award is the worst plat chat guarantee of the year. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, once again, this is this is actually Mimi should be tried in the Hague because she's the one that's brought all of these she so much of this. She's the one that's brought this to us like a like a like a, like a, a locust, a swarm I, sending upon us. I can't remember if we showed it on the show, but that tweet you posted, Bala, uh, of Previous, oh, dude, oh my god, previous was... to Mimi starting the smile for the camera bit, <laughs> we were 80% correct on games where we all agreed. After the bit that Mimi started, 30% correct where we all agree. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, that's horrendous. I, I literally went through every single unanimous prediction that we did because I was prepping for this award, and we were so good. And then all of a sudden, the fucking thumb started coming out, and all of a sudden, Jesus the mad part, crazy. The mad part about that is that we we don't know who each other are predicting when we get to the game, right? Yeah. Like no, I, unless no. you guys are looking at it, and I'm not. No. Like no, it, I don't it, know what you've predicted. So it's just, I guess there was just a period of time where all of the favorites were losing every time. That, or no, no just, I think it was a mass brain a psychosis for the clout. <laughs> I think that's what is happening. Oh yeah, the no oh my god, oh the nominees. Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> the nominees are LG versus EG in oh. NA stage two week three. Yeah. There's LG. Uh, oh, and in that one we picked LG to win, and uh, well, lo and behold, <laughs> EG won. <laughs> Actually, this was the one that started it all. This was the very first uh, one, if, if I remember correctly. Um, very yep. nice. And then. Shortly after that, uh, we picked <laughs> we picked version one to beat LG. Oops, oh. LG win that one. <laughs> then we predict. I wasn't on that print. I don't think. Okay, you got that, screenshots. Man. Okay. God, There's version no one really should have won that game. Really that that is a tilter, man. Version that was one in the first round of playoffs so or something, and wasn't it? I was on that print. Oh my god, I'm so sad. Yep, well done, Connor. <laughs> okay, I can't remember. Quote, quote from this one. That Josh said, "This is a snoozer." Right after the fucking <laughs> 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 Pretty good. Can't believe Pretty I nice. That to LG. Um, then we have Optic versus Zersha. We all picked Optic to win. Okay. And Zersha okay. won 2-0. I mean, I mean, I mean what? I, mean, mm. I know, what? but no one mean? going for the group stage Optic curse, including me. No one going for it, huh? And look at Brent Dude, again. This fucking <laughs> Brent. <laughs> yeah, bro. This is set up here. Jesus. You want another quote? This one's good. Why it starts this? He was like, I didn't know what I put. I was going to say, did I put Zersha? I hope not, because Optic are definitely going to win. I'm glad I picked the winner. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> fake news. I didn't say that. That is fake Ugh. news. All right, next Ugh. we have uh, EG versus Optic, uh, where we all picked Optic, and EG won 2-1. That was in the NA stage week four. Uh, that was like when EG were on a tear and they were looking really good, but Optic hadn't lost yet, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so it was yeah. like, well, surely Optic are still going to win. They haven't lost yet, right? <laughs> I, I think that one's quite reasonable as well. I don't feel bad about that one. I, I'd pray yeah. Optic again to win that game. Then I'd be wrong uh, yeah. again. We had uh, Ascend versus Mech in the EMEA Stage 2 playoffs. Egregious. This one is fucking This is when Mech won 2 0. But if I remember correctly, the week before, they were looking. Me yes, this was Mech looking really tragic. I it was the game where Chronicle like threw the stim beacon at someone, at an opponent. <laughs> yes. Like, it was... yes. And then we all picked Ascend. I mean, that, yep. God. I mean, that is such a stupid game to go for a guarantee on. That I mean, there are such a so bad many. Game to guarantee. Then we have Loud vs. Crew in the groups of Copenhagen, where we picked Loud, but Crew won 2 1 because Crew always beat the teams from Brazil. No one going for the Crew always beat teams from Brazil narrative, of course. We all get boomed on that one. Yeah. That's all right. That was no, no, no. Oh, there we are, of course. Yep. Uh, Look at real quick. Uh, Sideshow has a okay. note on this one saying that there's a 90% chance <laughs> that they win. <laughs> 
Um, this might be where my 35% uh, chance. Yeah, that's how it came up. It's like there's no th- no chance, and then Josh was like, no, there's a 90% chance this game. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. Awful. And then we have Optic versus Guild at Copenhagen. Oh, God. I mean, we all, uh, we all went for Optic. Guild win 2-0. I mean... Ugh. That was I mean, insane. That's, that came that's out just ridiculous. And uh, that, 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 that's, that's bullshit. It's that it's one's crazy bullshit. that Optic lost so many opening groups matches and still made it to top four every event. This is crazy. It, it really is actually. So many of these are us going for Optic, but they lose. <laughs> but they're still the most consistent team of the year. Uh, and then finally we have Phase versus Guard in the NALCQ upper bracket final. Um, Josh said, Phase have three Trents. And <laughs> that's, an interesting, that's an interesting thing to know. Uh, oh, I remember this. I said, someone said, look at my someone face. said, oh, I'm not happy about this. And look at Brent. Dude, someone said, the, <laughs> someone said the guard have Trent, and I said they have three Trents. They have Trenty Bay, Trenty, and <laughs> fucking Super Trent. <laughs> It was Baby Trent. <laughs> oh, Baby Trent. Baby there you go. Jesus. It's just so dumb. It's so stupid. Just genius. Uh, God. Just genius. I mean, we are shit. And that was after the guard. <laughs> but that was LCQ where the guard looked fucking uh, crazy bad beforehand. And then they end up almost right. going to the champs. Right. All righty. The worst plat chat guarantee of the year uh, is... You know what this means? <laughs> Ascend versus Mech in the <laughs> yeah, EMA I mean, Stage yeah. 2 playoffs. Um, do you, yeah, you have this with audio so we can stupid. relive the moment here, Kurt? You want to play the clip? Oh. Oh. You know what this means? Smile! Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> We're so stupid. Uh-huh. Oh, what a good, God, what an really excellent good. feature that is. God, Excellent feature. Good job, Surely, I really win. wish we'd been able to use it for North America, but we, there were just no games where no. there's a massive favorite playing at the end. But I mean, no this, clout. Dude, is Mech really going to have a resurgence just because we predicted all for a second? No. <laughs> I can say with confidence, the answer is no. Well, that's a certified <laughs> plat check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a certified plat check. The magic is lost. There the is magic no is way. gone. The, it's yeah. the Oh wrong. my god. Exactly. The magic is gone. Exactly. The exactly. magic is gone. Exactly. We're entering the, the now, age of magic. Magic is, is gone. The Ascent are improving every single week. They're playing more normal comps. Cena's popping the fuck off. Monster looks unreal. I, I, I just don't see it. Monster I see Chronicle walking unreal. into his Molotov. He's I see Chronicle trying to chop people's heads off of his stimmy. I don't see I don't see how they win though. Yeah, yeah, okay. I have to- reasonable. God, that was reasonable. Awful. Let's take a yeah, look. That, 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 was, a ter- that, that was, was the period. Was bad. That, but that was the period of time where Mech were actually like they looked like they, they were throwing yes. for money. They I, looked, have to, they like, I have to go look at what I predded for this. I have bad. to. I, were, the worst yeah, Chronicle was walking into his own mollies and like throwing stim beacons at people when he snuck up behind them. That was previous dangerous. week was so bad from them. Yes, it was I on Icebox, wasn't it? I went first, and no wonder they fucking lost. Oh my god. It was your fault, Bala. Oh. All right. Next up, oh, this is a this is a this is a great one. Um, and shout out to uh, some uh, some of the viewers, people in Discord that helped with some of these nominations. It is the funniest plat chat moment of the year. Mm. So we got That's some nominations here. from the people here. Um, first up, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna relive. We're gonna go down memory lane here for a second. First up. <sighs> Josh goes to sleep after I pick North Epson to beat DRX. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, d- d- I picked... N- dude, what the... F- what was I... North Epson to beat DRX. It, it, it was the Japan backlash. It was after we oh. had... It's after, it's after we, what you, happened to this, you were the Zeta Division Meteor. incident. Meteor. Yeah, it was... Roll, and also Meteor. Roll yeah. the footage. Roll the footage. What Crazy. is this? All right, we have Psychopaths. DRX, North Epson... Pro gaming team. I didn't know it said that on the graphic. <laughs> the North right. Action Pro Gaming Team. I'm going with. I'm going to go for a cheeky upset. Josh, <laughs> Josh <laughs> is just going to bed. I'm going. Josh bed. is actively. I'm, gonna, I'm going. I'm going actually <laughs> bed right now. He's going. Josh is going to sleep. Dude, you know why I'm going to sleep? Because so this is a number. Small. This is another like ninety percent, eighty percent. DRX do not lose in groups to APAC teams. They simply don't. You've lost. 
your mind. <laughs> DRX are winning this game. They're smoking up. They were good against Paper X last time. They're going to be good against Lothepsion. They're the perfect style to match up. Bedge. <laughs> <laughs> I was off some uh, outlandish drugs before that episode. <laughs> what was I thinking, dude? What uh, was I thinking? What uh, was the score in the game? Do you know what the score was? Was I don't know. Valid in the it. 80 we to 90%? Percent? I'm going to look I bet it up. I can find it. Let's I know. Uh, it was close for North Epson, at least, right? Oh, it was. Uh, okay, so this was in their. Uh, which good, event was no, it? No, it was a stomp. It was, it was Copenhagen. It was 2 0. Yeah. Yeah. It was 2 0 for DRX. First they map was. Up. First map was like fucking 13-5, and then the last, was, second map was 13-1. It was 13-8, then 13-1, and they yep. got rolled and smoked. It was an absolute flattening of the next level. 13-1, actual yes. bedge. <laughs> yeah. What was I yeah. thinking? Okay, next, the next nominee is the David Denis T1 statement via the Twitter for iPad. Classic <laughs> moment. Roll the tape. Uh, Ahead of what? Ahead of him... Cheating again? Jesus. Oh my Holy god. god. That is That's so funny. funny. <laughs> oh, it's such a serious statement, and then it's just Twitter for iPad. <laughs> you can just do the social uh, media manager. Oh. We'll, we'll just fucking go on the iPad. <laughs> By the, way, by the way, that tweet does not exist anymore. It's nowhere oh, to be oh, found. Yeah, it got I'm eviscerated. Sure they, they it. Wow. Oh, oh. That's so funny. All right. Oh, Next up, an iconic moment of the year for sure. It is... The Bren They Have Shroud rant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, one second and the footage will be rolled. Truly one of the, the iconic Platchat moments here. It's got the sense of they can't be stopped right now. They can't be stopped. They got Shroud. They got Shroud. They have Shroud. They have Shroud. <laughs> they can't be stopped. They're going to win it all. They're going to win it all. I'm lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. It's such a perfectly clipped <laughs> moment, like an insanely well-clipped moment. <laughs> oh, that is great. I still love that Twitch emote as well. I've got They no, Have they Shroud have on shroud. my Twitch. Oh, it's yeah. so good. It's perfect for every moment. It's just Brent <laughs> screaming into a camera. Uh, okay, next up. I think this might also be from when I was just coping so hard for North Epson. This is This is a Connor clip. I don't remember what this could be. <laughs> this, this I'm, is, buy, I'm buying the fucking dip with Sentinel. This is their lowest. This is the dip. The dip. Uh. This is the dip unless they all decide tomorrow to become content creators. And then the team just evaporates. Tens might retire. Tens might pull another cloud. Tens might cloud nine again. He might do a second cloud <laughs> nine, retire, what, 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 and then get sold for oh, twenty million dollars. Do you have even have the power rank? Bleeding yeah. sports are going to buy him and send him to Baypack <laughs> to play with. Piff. This is, They'll this, pay out the buyout. This is Matt. You've just been spouting madness like you're some sort of mad <laughs> preacher this whole time. You've stared into the eyes of God, and your brain has evaporated. Like this is fucking crazy what you've been saying so far today. It's uh. Actual fucking madness. So. <laughs> okay, that one, I think yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. That one's not going to make the top. It's not going to make the top. That was just me incredulous at Wyatt. That's not I, making the top. I like it a lot. I, I like enjoy that one. That one. I feel I like that might be even the most quotable of them. Oh, you have Jesus. stared into the eyes of God and your brain has evaporated. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, next up, we have the sideshow apology to the Zeta Division fans. Uh, this, this one wasn't a, a funny one. moment. This was a serious moment, no, okay? This, <laughs> this, was, very this was a serious apology. Uh huh. Here we go. <sighs> I'm sorry. I thought Zeta Division would be a bad team based on their bad <laughs> online performances, and I was wrong. I'm ashamed of my analysis. I should have realized Zeta would improve exponentially at Reykjavik. It's my job to predict results accurately. And I should have known that a region that only had won three maps ever at Masters would make top four at this event. I let my baldness go to my head. And for that, from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry. Please, please, don't harass Bren or Bala or Kurt. I, I, am, I am fully responsible for all failures. 
to acknowledge <laughs> the Japanese domination in Valorant. <sighs> I made a severe lapse in my judgment. I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm just here to apologize. I'm sorry to the Japanese fans. I'm sorry to the Japanese Prime Minister. And most importantly, <laughs> I'm sorry to the Zeta Division. I made a dumb mistake because I am a dumb bald egg who saves far too much money on shampoo each year. I promise to do my best from now on. Thank you to all of the Platchat members for supporting me during this hard time so I can learn and grow and change. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind just hitting the join button underneath this video, we'd really you know, help us through these hard times. And uh, yeah, all I can hope for is you accept this apology. Oh my God. <laughs> uh... By the way, shout out to uh, W for renewing their membership for a month. And Chris Miller as well for renewing your membership during the show. Thank you. Welcome to the membership. Appreciate that. It is such a hard time. Finally, last up, um, we have my predictions. <laughs> Wait, what? what is this? What? I remember this one. It's been tough for me. It's been, <laughs> it's been tough for me. Honestly, oh, yeah. there's Let's been a lot of upsets, yeah. and I feel like I've made some pretty good predictions. <laughs> I really, I really... What was your percentage on? Their it timmies was... are catching up to you, Wyatt. The timmies are catching up to you. You're at 40% or 35. My, per my percentage, I, I, there, I, I really think that... There, listen, I picked a lot of games where I was happy with the team that I picked, but there was an upset. I, I, that's all I can say. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but also... <laughs> it's fine because I'm going to get everyone's respect back when I pick the Copenhagen winner and finalists correctly. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I've got, I've got some notes on my phone about Nip and why they're going to win this game too. Do <laughs> you know what? That was really... The, the, towards the latter half of 2022... That honestly was, you know, when you walk into a, you know, you'd go home back to your hometown, seeing your family or something, and you walk into like maybe a bar and you see someone from your high school, like, like he's had it rough. That time, <laughs> of, that, that latter half of 2022 with your predictions of points. I'm going to be, yeah. I'm you gonna had gonna, it rough. 2022 times. was a tough year for me, analytically speaking. <laughs> I, wasn't at, <laughs> I wasn't at the top of my game this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We gave every single power ranking an F. So um, why? Yeah. I think right. uh, I have no idea who's boat. winning this or what's winning this. The funniest moment of the year. My God! At least T1 are gonna win something. It's David Denis. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> the Twitter for iPad takes it down <laughs> as the funniest moment of the year. Congratulations uh, to T1 <laughs> for that. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that Jesus. was an absolute banger of a clip. It really was one of the yeah, an absolute banger yep. of a clip. Oh, God. So All right. Back to a little bit of normalcy here. Up next, we have the best match of the year. Your nominees. Mech versus Fnatic. The upper semis in stage one, where it went to 9,000 overtime rounds on split. <laughs> DRX versus FPX. In the Champions Upper Quarterfinals, Paper Rex versus, I can't see, th it's, there's a problem, with, I fixed it, Paper Rex, <laughs> we can edit that out in post, Paper Rex versus FPX in the Copenhagen Grand Final, DRX versus Optic, the Champions Lower Bracket Final, Fnatic versus Leviathan, the Masters Copenhagen Playoff Game, and Exet versus Leviathan, in the Masters, Copenhagen playoffs. A lot of great games. But what is the best match of the year? The winner is DRX versus Optic in the Champions Lower Bracket Final. Yay! <laughs> I'm gonna keep it stack. <laughs> I don't. That I don't match is gonna be so happy to have won. This this match is gonna it's gonna feel amazing. <laughs> this one was where DRX nearly reverse swept. I'm gonna it keep the... it a stack. I didn't vote for this game. With, with my vote, I voted for Exet Leviathan. I think that's the what? most memorable game of the year. That's crazy. It's the I most mean, memorable not, I mean, game it's a good of the year. Game. Do you, is, I think it's the most memorable moment not. of the year. I don't think it's the most memorable game. I think Ascend what is super in the memorable. First game? What map did they even play? What, the first map? Uh-huh. 
I think it was like Haven or some shit. <laughs> no. The last map was Haven. Haven was the last map. map. <laughs> or, oh, yeah. That, I don't remember what the first map was. Who cares? The second map was an ultra banger. <laughs> it was a scent. The overtime. Bola, you fu don't you fucking dare. In the chat, uh, you had to go skim back this game. I saw you. You were skimming it back, and you're like, oh, it was no, good. No, I knew you didn't even what remember game, the game it was. No, you I didn't even remember what, the game. I knew what game it was. There's nothing memorable about it. I was comparing it. it. This game was fucking goaded, bro! Reverse sweep almost fucking happened! Like, oh, we had the reverse shitty sweep of 13 sevens. Woohoo! It, it, no. it, it, this game had <laughs> nope. There the were so many clutch the moments. Most there was so memorable game was Exet Leviton. No. Not for no, the best the game. Most memorable, the most memorable game was Mech Fanatic, of course, and it changed the course of the year it for was everybody. Very memorable for all Mech would have won every tournament viewers. ever. All four thousand of them loved it. Kurt, can you what? play the can you play the 0 0.02 clip? No, don't for, play that clip. Yeah, yeah, because because Bala Bala's talking no. about this. Like he's so high. Oh, Mech had the best <sighs> game this year. It's all right. They would have changed the world. Look at it. I mean, look at it and and feel your heart break again. Feel your heart can just you be torn to pieces. Can you play the clip of England yeah, losing <laughs> the World <laughs> Cup? <laughs> can you play the clip of Harry Kane? Or play, play, play that fucking clip of Harry Kane. Oh, look at this and remember, oh. Bala. Is this your favorite game of the year, it was, was it? It was, it was, man. It broke my heart. Like, it ruined it. Took it out of my chest and Mech didn't make a single land, even though there were one second on every game. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. legitimately, Brave Af just swings at the perfect time. He knew, and Defo oh, never had the chance. Point zero two. I, <sighs> listen, I just, I, I think the Exit Leviton game was very memorable. That's all I'm going to say. Map two, sure. percent, overtime, clutch after clutch after clutch, and then Haven, probably the most iconic moment of gameplay in the year. Not for good reasons, but for very entertaining and memorable ones. <laughs> Which I, was luckily, we rested control satchel. What? of the votes from you. The committee had rested control from our good, our dear leader, the, the, the head of the, the Ministry of Truth for this vote. Yep, so. listen, I had to, <laughs> I mean, I think I I had to give one up. I, I, I think I think Xerox Optic is actually a very good. I I, I mean it was an insanely fucking God, good map. King is such a fucking badass for this though. It's <laughs> <He does laughs> a full. I don't care. He's still such a fucking badass. This, this, I mean it was it was an insane moment. It was that an was literally moment. a fucking action movie clip. Like yes, this could yeah, be a Christmas movie. We could make this a Christmas movie. Fucking yeah. X at Leviathan, Die Hard again. This yes. could be the Zoomers Die Hard. This could be it. <laughs> but but this, could this be didn't it. win though. And map two was like no. nine hundred no. Melser clutches to keep the game going it was nuts who oh, yes. <laughs> what? he says who <laughs> he drops a who I, 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 I just the guy. i i can't i can't i can't with these gameplay what? andies it's about the fun and one the memories. of the others <laughs> well, okay well if you're talking about fun and the memories one of the other nominations had boaster just deciding to pick an operator in ot and gets a 4k do you remember that game yep. again against leviathan such a stupid game that dude. is such a just just but it was a game. everywhere. It was a goaded That was a very game. fun game. Well. I'm, not, I'm not arguing that game wasn't goaded. It was goaded, but it just wasn't as goaded as it, it was, just wasn't goaded with the sauce. Yeah, it was one of the most goaded games of all time. I'm, I'm passionate. Not this one. I mean, this is all a right. different one. <laughs> This is uh, so good. I, I want to keep This it is the one where here. the OT should never have happened because Boaster should have just stuck the defuse. Dude, I just realized how many of games of these games you're casting, Josh. You lucky bastard. This is. <laughs> never is, mind. Is, anyways. Is, is it luck or is it just me making them what they are? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ew. Dude, get this guy off the broadcast. All right. All right. Uh, we've got the best clutch of the year. Some pog nominees. Uh, Yampy versus Navi, 1v4 at the EMEA LCQ. Yeah, do you want to just roll these clips, Kurt? Yeah, let's watch them. Yeah, because half of you guys didn't watch it this year, so. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a fair, it's safe to say that uh, if it was up to me, Europe wouldn't be getting very many nominations. <laughs> because the region's just too boring. <laughs> <laughs> I th this clutch was absurd from Yampi. Didn't this, this, mm. Does this clutch matter at all? Didn't they lose the series? I can't even remember. Yeah, I think <laughs> I mean, they did. I, either, I think they did. Sure, I think but it right. still was an insane clutch overall. This is a bad clutch in my opinion. They're okay. throwing like they're all peeking them one by one into a chamber up. Like I, I think why you had a clip on the on the Plat Chat podcast where you were fucking roasting this. 
I probably Dude, I mean, that's, that's that was a nasty. nasty that nasty one would be too easy. Why are you pushing him? All right. They're just holding. I'm seeing a theme here. Yeah, actually. they were just they were just they were just posted up. They weren't even pushing sight. They didn't they, they were just sitting there trying to like hold both angles. Next up we have both. Leo, a 1v5 versus Navi, also at the EMEA LCQ. <laughs> Navi, guys, what are we what what the <laughs> hell are we doing? <laughs> Couple of these rounds. Okay, I've and, seen, you know. I've seen this clip before as well, and it doesn't have the sexiness that a 1v5 should. Yeah. You know? I've, it's it's gonna it's gonna go for a while here. He gets oh, most really? of them with the sheriff, doesn't he? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, just just take a look. I mean, yeah, I forget this uh, one. It's, honestly, it's spectacular. It's spectacular in that he pulls it off, but it, it doesn't have the sex appeal to me. Right, right. Yeah, I I can't even remember this one. It's so I mean, this one, oh, I mean, well, nobody watched this game, but yeah, I remember this. This is crazy. What? Yeah, I probably didn't watch this game. I mean, because... I missed one way. <laughs> <laughs> Taking our sweet time here. Ooh. By the way, while we wait for this to actually Lord. do anything, a correction, that game was really important. <laughs> the just oh, the MP it? clutch was super important in a close game. Oh, really? Yeah, was, because also, I mean, nice. like, that was, yeah. Good job, Just Andy. economically, that was a rifle round. Mm. It's been really cold I'm... in Austin this past week, and our heater was broken, <laughs> and it was really annoying going to sleep. All right, here we go, here we go, here oh. we go. Oh! That was cool. See, there's... This is where the sex is. Where's where's the that, where that's where your sexy is, right there. Nice no? little stun. Yep. But where is that? SSK7? Where is he, bro? He was, he, he was literally just flanking Working. all the way, like lurking all the way to attack or spawn that entire time. And then he had to come all the way back. It is time to look. Leo just, just read it and it was like, okay, I got two and walk into sight because he was fucking lurking. This is the problem, though. Leo's first kill and Leo's last kill are so I separated from the, from the rest of it. This angle. This so has good for no him. sex appeal whatsoever. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. The 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 Kalat kill with the sheriff has a lot of sex appeal, but then the the missed op shot at the end and like the time between. Yeah, that, it's that was amazing. Leo, but that it's one, a one v five. That never happens. It requires that literally an edit. Never happens. It does. Yeah, it does. Fucking uh, like, Xander won a one v five, didn't he? Oh yeah, on Icebox. I remember. Wow, so cool, Xander. Next up, Durka, <laughs> the one v three versus FPX at Copenhagen. Roll this one was sexy. Oh, this, this one. one, this yeah. And you sound like a Hollywood producer right now. When you're like, we made this sexier. We made sexier. Well. <laughs> I mean, this was just clean. Some clean chamber gameplay. Big match at LAN. You're at Copenhagen. You're in Europe. You got your mouse. What can you do? Win the clutch. Nice. He dropped like 500 Durka. ACS that game, <laughs> and then didn't do anything for the rest of the tournament. Basically. Yep. Hell yeah. All right. Next up, <laughs> we got. Artis, the iconic artist clutch versus DRX at Champions 2022. Now this God one, damn. sex appeal sound, all please? over. With sound? The yeah, fucking I crowd? Mean, it's so nice. Just Bala putting in oh, requests to the tech. Oh, get the sound for you. You got it, you have to. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, you know, that's our, that's our new producer, did, Lurch. Yeah. Lurch back there. <laughs> control kill the start. <laughs> this is where Brave needs to be huge on the flank. Magnum at least able to grab one. The defuse on their way. No sweet. <laughs> that wasn't even on purpose. Well, I don't well even know how that well happened. Well played. You tried well played. Hard. That was not even on purpose. I have no idea how that happened. All right, let me get that. Yeah, you just got trolled. Right. My bad. I derailed the show. I'm sorry. Who slightly isolated from the others on a solo mission. But do remember the buzz was on to keep him in check a couple of times prior. Now the paranoia committed, but the smoke then goes up to try to quell well, the well, so pressure really on the black. OT. Dude, look at his position in here as well, and how much he just sacrifices the rest of the team. No, they haven't cleared RB. He's going to find the first two, and buzz commits through the smoke. Finds him on the site, and now there's a problem. It's all on Artis to be the game changer, the difference maker, the man who can walk on water. Waiting for it. This is everything, Artis. Walking around. No way, Artis! And Artis Wonderland gets Zestow. Needs so much more, though. That's the first step. Now we look towards Sugetsu. Have you found anything? There's one towards Dice, one towards Jen. That's a pixel out of place, and he spots it. Artis now gets proactive. Does he find Stax, potentially, who's starting to lean on over? 30 seconds, the double face comes in. It's all in one man's hands. Spike recovered, 24 seconds now. 
he's gonna creep up on the side. He wants to plant. He sticks it. Chad. Well, okay, one goes nope. in. He I mean, that is way. insanely does get Chad Marco. stick. Prowler, not a problem just yet. Another no problem. way! Oh, oh, oh my God! 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 The man can do no wrong. Yeah, what I mean that one's. I mean good. that's. That yeah, is insane. That's that a, is a That's going to be a tough one to beat, blood. but here's Shao's 1v3 against Fnatic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's see if Shao can compete with that one. What's he doing here? What, what is it? What? <laughs> what is I can't remember what this one is. Yeah, me neither. Oh, I what, what tournament one. are we in here? Copenhagen. Oh, this is Copenhagen. Yeah, this is... Uh, Wait, so this, this is, is against this is FPX with... Uh, no, no, no. This is in the oh, lower Copenhagen. finals. Copenhagen. Yep. yeah, yeah. Not lower finals, you know. Holy shit. I mean, it was nice. It was a very nice clip. To me, but was it's an artist, just, though? it was Shao's consistency and yeah. how many times he pulled it off. Not necessarily no, like the flashiness yeah, of yeah. those attempts. True, true. Um, and no finally, artists. we have EU, <laughs> the 1v5 versus the guard in the VCT, stage 2 NA, uh, in this little 1v5 scenario on Split, my old friend. Split. No way. No way! Is he doing this right now? <laughs> now this is a this is all I I do this clip I do remember I yeah. do remember this clip it's still in my head. Yeah, that was because that right that it was all got good. condensed within a Twitter clip. That that's yes. why you remember yep. it. Yep, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly why. Precisely. And the winner is wow my God it's artists who's <laughs> that's unbelievable holy yeah. shit it's artists with one before against DRX and champions. I mean it just has to be that was just that might be the nastiest clutch in Valorant yet. Period. I mean, that's just, it, that was insanity. I mean, unless yeah. someone, I, I can't even think of another one that was that crazy. That was Too bad nuts. they lost the game. Yeah. Lost the yeah. Game. Unlucky. 2-0 was the award show. Game. And it was an OT as well. I mean, that's just so sick. All right. Now, this is another great award we have here. The FTX Worst PR Move of the Year Award. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for I told sponsoring you I got the this. FTX. Yo, what a good sponsor. Well, That's thank sick. you, FTX, for sponsoring this one. All right, yeah, and yeah. first up, God, oh, you guys remember this one. Were you guys working this day? It's the turret bug ruling. It's the turret bug <laughs> uh, X set and FTX. Thank you, the Lord. Oh, shit. God, that's, <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> Whoa. Yep. That was a rough that that was a rough a rough one. And then they did the ruling and then they replayed and then everyone's there all day. That God, was an uh, awful move. Yep. Truly one of the worst. <laughs> but also <laughs> Dude, what is This um, was me and Doug in my hotel room. This was we were just fucking all right. pounding drinks. I was asleep when it happened. <laughs> I, I just went to bed. I went to bed and I woke up and I was like, what occurred yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next up. One late in the year. We have the Game Changers Rob Wiz ruling. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> I mean, this one. Okay, okay. I'm going to. I think. I think this. Well, no. This actually, is a it's W not, Rob not. Wiz, by the way. This is not, not a Rob Wiz L or Morse PR move. This is no, a, no, no. This is. Yeah, this is the ruling. Uh, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, about to yeah, say yeah. this was like a Mickey Mouse one in terms of the stake, but then I realized they literally removed their coach. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, they actually, removed, no. They removed their coach for the finals for what should have just been a two hundred dollar fine. <laughs> like, yeah, that was that was nuts and very silly. I mean, one can like on Twitter though. So not bad. Ah, an early one here <laughs> in the year. Yeah, I'm this noticing a, that we tend to profit from these situations. <laughs> mm. I like That's that. what we are. Uh, this is a little throwback one. Do you guys remember when 100 Thieves dropped their entire roster after losing 13 <laughs> at the beginning of the year? <laughs> I mean, oh, this, that okay. was funny. That's, that uh, is that classic. Was, that God, was a this classic. is so good. This one is so, so good, but it's so long ago at the beginning of the year. It's also, it's, it, it's also like such a, yeah, it, it's so long ago and the majority of the, like, it was very, very funny at the time, but like, I'm trying to remember the aftershocks of the event. And the aftershocks of the event was mostly, uh, the most the one that stood out the most was just people being pissed for Eccles. Yeah. Yeah, I remember and, that. I mean, the problem is, like, there's just not enough clout to, there's not enough <laughs> clout to really bring up the well, people's ire. Can you bring up the VLR page again? Because I remember that they got roasted for running this chamber comp on Ascent. On Ascent. 
Isn't this a comp that people start? Oh no, no, no! Actually, no. <laughs> they had no, Cipher no. and Silva. Why was Baby J on Cipher? Oh no! Get this off my screen. They deserve to drop the roster. Actually, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh god! Um, Isn't this after they signed Eccles for like two weeks? Yes, they had Eccles yes, for two and weeks. And he moved to the US and cut him. Also, yes. he was not the problem. Uh, but that's fine. All right. <laughs> Shout out to Eccles. I hope he's doing well because uh, you got screwed. Next up, we have C9 trading Autumn and Zeta for Curry. That was now, uh, okay. This is a classic. Now, this is definitely a classic. yeah. That, now, is this really a, a PR? That, I'm trying to also um, is the worst PR move here. Does this fall under a PR category? I would say so. Yes, I would uh, say so. Say, yeah. Okay. The just the. The level of clout, the clout performance index has gone down massively for Cloud9 because of this move and its consequences for their performance. I think it's a, it's, you know, it's a clout and PR. It is, it is a bit of, it is a bit of a, a 2008 PR, like clout recession. For, for <laughs> it C9 really did. Here. Yeah, that, that just, the year kind of spiraled out of control after that one. Um, and finally, I mean, classic. We got Carlos hanging out with Andrew Tate. Oh, and I mean, come on, man. And I mean, drooping just, down on it. I, 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 there's, there's not even, I mean, this is just not even like, oh, I mean, I, we already know. I, I, I surely mean, have, there has to be, there has to be a winner. Surely I mean, there has to be. When you dude, lose your team a franchise spot, like, there has to be, <laughs> there has to be a winner, a clear Cloud, winner. The, 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 the previous one we were talking about, where it hurt Cloud9's <laughs> clout, they were yeah. on a downward trajectory the entire year to the point where they weren't going to get into partners ships until Carlos decided to just have a party with Andrew Tate and then suddenly Cloud9 are back in partnerships I mean just bonkers also he's been doubling and tripling Dude, down oh, on Twitter oh, recently this and it's, no, it's, been... in, it's, in, it's awful it's truly awful to look at and I keep on getting recommended oh. his tweet. I don't even follow him but I just keep popping up all the time yeah the entire time I can't I, get I he's see, like, yeah he's, he's been posting oh. some he's been posting some pics that have big like I'm gonna own this city energy just like him in a car with his Carlos camera. has been tweeting screenshots yeah, of him Jesus. talking on Discord, giving advice to people, saying stuff like, Why are you talking to women you're not sleeping with? I mean, legitimately, like that kind of stuff. No, and like, then there's the counter screenshots of the people trying to teach him about tax fraud in his own Discord. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just like, it is just a, there's a clear winner. There's literally just I mean, winner. just, uh, a, listen, just, oh. just put, it up. I'm going to, uh, maybe it's 100 Thieves. I mean, if they want, I can help them out and get some more, get them a new nomination. Uh, we got Carlos taking it down for hanging out with Andrew Tate. I mean, there's just oh, not that's even, a, and, and this is simply, they're little yeah, things. I mean, All that's a small fries comparison to the business repercussions. Yeah, the, the, down there. The, the, yeah, they're, now they're posting tweets that are getting 200 likes with the truck. I mean, it's... it's, it's no, we got a little more. We got a little more than 200. It was I swear, when we... When, if you scroll, when we... Oh, I mean, look at things that. Things are looking... Oh. Connor, <laughs> things are looking oh, rough down there in the thread. We need <laughs> the fucking not, yeah. Wyatt, the noise. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, uh... Yeah, jeez. Yeah, I mean, the ramifications of that one were just... You clear cut winner. All right. What's the lower third doing? Next up, we've got. The winner is it's intermingled okay. with, with the other banner. There That's all right. <laughs> Next up, we have the Wyatt's. I mean, this is kind of the, the Wyatt's yearly award. So it's the, it's the best Wyatt's award of the year. And right. your nominees are Dust Murray for buying the award for oh, one gift no. itself. Come on. <laughs> Uh, did we vote on this? Yes. <laughs> no. Also, no, we did not. <laughs> nominated Tens. Uh, tens Dog. <laughs> Kaide and Tens for getting engaged. And Bren for getting immortal. <laughs> Are your nominees. Wait, can we vote now? Maybe we could just vote now. I, I vote Bren getting immortal. No, Kaide and Tens getting engaged. Uh, this is why it's... Sancti like this is this yeah is, I know but his, we can't his, 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 we voted for the rest well, no, no, of no, no. them but so. it, yeah it was it was a democratic democratic vote here you guys didn't submit but the votes for this one already <laughs> because I <laughs> uh, I mean we we mailed them in you, you yeah didn't get I mean, they're all in, well yeah, yeah you guys mailed in yeah, all the I, votes I got all the votes yeah we we oh. you, yeah, we yeah. got all the votes that you guys submitted and I okay, have the yes. winner 
that you guys all picked. Did you get? Did you, I sent in about eighty to ninety votes myself. <laughs> so let me. So. <laughs> I mean, this is what. What's in this envelope? Okay, is, okay, let's see. Let's see. This is what you guys voted for. Fine. The uh, winner is. My God, it's Dust Murray for buying the Wii Sports. What a this shocking is result! A, <laughs> what a, what a, sh a shock uh, twist! Dude, this <laughs> ultimate oh God, frisbee! Oh my God! In a stunning victory. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's egregious. There's <laughs> simply no reason Damn, for that. Dust, Dust has got a dumpy on him, huh? Oh, no. Uh, what a shock. Truly, the Wyatt's Weekly Award has gone down the pan. All right. Yeah. Next up. The best vast setup of the year award. Which no, vast a hotly computer setup Truly. is the best? Now, we got a lot of images. To, we got, there's a lot of nominees. First up, we have a vast inside of a closet with a terrible microphone. He spent about 10 episodes with this set up at the top of the year. <laughs> there he is in that gray, grayscale oh, misfits the closet. The gooseneck microphone. What yeah, classic. the gooseneck mic. I mean, that... I think uh, that uh, was the, they were definitely working hard to break my spirit, but I did not relent. And then you upgraded time. slightly to the vacant room with a good microphone. So let's take a look at that one. <laughs> ah, <laughs> That's jet, well, it's not a vacant room. It's when I just, it, it's got a bed and a nightstand in it. I just haven't had, it's my room. I just okay. haven't put more shit in it yet. All right, all right. I mean, you got a U-Haul box in there. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't I just moved. I hadn't put all the things in there. But sure, fair enough. I mean, you were, you were definitely on a minimalist kick because next up is yes. the completely vacant room. <laughs> With a terrible <laughs> microphone and a gamer chair, so you at least got, you, really, you at least I, have a gamer chair now. I don't know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with where that's at. Um, I'm not even totally certain. Just black out. And then a little bit of upgrading. Now you're back in a somewhat vacant room with a webcam mic sitting in a super gamer chair. You had the crazy. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's got on the side. Yeah, that was when we had the uh, we had a quick partnership with Blue Origin, and we were uh -huh. doing, we were getting some spacecraft. Oh wow! Yeah, um, it was a big and one. the next one, Heyo. Daddy of Ast looks down on his mere morsel in a comfy gamer chair. <laughs> Yes, see, so this, okay, so I'm going to give you some context there. So that this mic had been set up in this room that was becoming a stream room. The camera, I was having to move in a lot of different ways. And in addition to that, that mic uh, couldn't move it to any, like, the mic was in a decent spot, but I couldn't move it because it had been set up in a particular way where it, like, been drilled into the desk by the sound engineer, which then departed the company, like, a mere day after <laughs> this occurred. So it was, like, it was a whole, it was a whole event. Uh, a whole next event up, occurred there. we've got Avast's uh, hideous green screen setup. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> First of all, okay, it's not hideous. It's just that's a green what the note says. I don't know. I'm just room. reading what the what the. It's just this is it's what the committee a, gave me to read. It's just a green screen blocking. I mean that 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 looks like a specifically bogey green. The the, the, the green screen color. <laughs> it's that's just the Elgato green screen, man. It's the it's the it's the one you buy uh, that ever all the streamers that. use. It's just the Elgato green screen. I'm that's what it is. Next up, this you couldn't even go through the effort of putting up something on the green screen. I don't control yeah. the pro I, I'm not the one putting graphics up on the stream for my chat. I'm not here for determining the motion graphics. You can do it with your own you can do it with your own webcam. From from OBS Ninja? Yeah. Yeah, virtual cam. Do you know what a virtual, virtual cam, cam is, Connor? OBS. Oh, that's Oh, I'm I'm not going to bother Gosh, with that, you know. I just <laughs> that's too much. That's we're, too much. we're on the air here. All right. Next up. Dude, this is when the ch this is when the misfits check cleared. He's got the new room with the soundproofing, a plant, a nice microphone, camera, and a slick gamer chair. Boy, look at nice. it! Oh, look at the foliage in the background. Look at that. What's what's at the bottom of your screen though? Why have you got a <laughs> um, caterpillar at the bottom of the screen? <laughs> That's. That is because the room was rapidly filling with water, so I had to complete the podcast. That is so <laughs> too That's not the water line. <laughs> this is, this is, that's what happened. <laughs> you guys just couldn't see it. Uh, it was great. Then uh, we There's had more. Oh my god. Then we had the Republic of Gamers out of focus streamer. <laughs> <laughs> 
that. That was because the camera that day, I don't know why I wouldn't focus, but I was just out of focus the whole episode. And finally, we have the family Christmas vacation webcam with webcam mic. Yes. Right now. That's, that was the gotcha one. All right. Uh, and the cool. winner for the best of ass setup of the year is the closet with the terrible microphone. Ah, uh, just so <laughs> I, iconic. We really got to know Connor in that room. He spends a lot of time in there. So dark in the second one. But really spends a lot of time in that one, learning and growing together. Thank um, you guys so much for this honor. <laughs> I very much appreciate it. I've really been waiting for this, this one for a long that? time. You did it on purpose. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> And finally, it's the Wyatt's Weekly Award for the year. God damn it. Who's it going to? And this, this is so out of pocket. <laughs> Wait, <are> we, <laughs> is this thing hot? I mean, what? <laughs> There's no, I, I don't even remember. I was in a fugue state when I recorded that. I don't know what was going on. Um, this, this, this is like the weekly award, but it's kind of for the year. You know what I mean? So Wasn't the, that the one you just gave to Dust? Well, that's for, no, that was the best Wyatt's Weekly Award of the year. This is Wyatt's Weekly Award for the year. You yeah, understand the, the difference? Huh? huh? Right, yeah, yeah. So I'm picking, <laughs> yeah, a, I'm picking a, a Wyatt's a Weekly award, award winner, like a new per, that, but the pre, that was for the best already given Wyatt's Weekly Award segment of the year. You understand? Okay. Why isn't this, so maybe I'm just- huh? No, I don't know. The bottom third for this should be Wyatt's yearly award, potentially, or is this, well, the other one should have been Wyatt's weekly well, award It's award. still the week, it's, it's yeah, this week. Yeah, it's still week. a week. I just, I'm just saying, it's, I'm just giving it some of the general- What do you guys okay, relax? We'll workshop this. Let we'll workshop hold this. up and let him cook. Him being me, okay? okay? <laughs> <laughs> the winner of the Wyatt's weekly yearly award Go someone who's just a, just a good guy, man. God damn it! I'm gonna give it to Howard Hamlin this year. I'm giving it. I'm giving the award <laughs> to Howard Hamlin this year. He's he's better call Saul posting again. He's doing it again. <laughs> it was just what I listen. Howard has been through a lot this year. He's a good guy. <laughs> I know you like this. Play it. Play it. Play it. I know <laughs> you get into the courtroom. I know you. Maybe don't shout. This. Okay, you can just play it, Kurt. Just. Play. You get to the courtroom. Maybe don't shout. The One Piece. The One Piece, the one piece is real. Dude. So, <laughs> I, I, I do. So good. I did that for you, so Connor. Good. I did that. That, that is my meme of the year, by the way. The One yep. Piece is real is my meme of the year. I know that's, that's your meme of the year, year, so I had to do 100%. that. I, I did that in part for you as well. But it was just, dude. Han, uh, Howard's a good guy. He had a tough year. A lot of respect. Big shout out to Howie. Wins the award. <laughs> and that's a wrap for the Platchat Award Show. Josh, you look dumbfounded and stunned. <laughs> that's how I feel. Dumb and stunfounded. That's exactly <laughs> how I feel. <laughs> all right. Mm. Thank you all for watching the Platchat Awards of 2022. I got to bounce. Listen, I got business to attend to. Uh, it's, been, it's been fun, though. Thank you all for joining Happy us. Thank you for the members throughout the episode. We will see you back next week to talk about next year. We will see you next year to talk about <laughs> all of the breaking Valorant news of the next seven days. Ooh, see you then, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>